That's again, we've got, we've got last one, last one on this, like, because, go on, go on. like, you lot will think I'm trying to throw shade, and that's not the case. Like, mm. no, I hear you. when I look at him, although he's younger than Harvey Barnes, I see more potential in Harvey Barnes than Callum Hudson. Oh, no, 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 the, the, I'm not the even ring. commenting again on this, man. I'm not commenting. The range, the range of uh, the way we perceive him, I think maybe shows that he should be in a question marks category, man. Because I, I 100% agree with Dej in the fact that mm. the injury is huge, especially for a young guy. Like no, one, uh, it's hard to expect him to have a huge season coming off that injury. <laughs> Yo, I'm tryna get my sterling up in the city, so CV play. As soon as my child can walk, it's straight project Mbappé. Run all the verbal, as soon as I hear that whistle, we get straight to the action. Come on, lads, where's the passion? Do like Alan scene, wear headbands for the fashion. If the defenders drop back, we can't and then attack them. I got my eye on the ball, I got my eye on the ball, yeah. yeah. I got my eye on the ball. I got my eye on the boat, yeah. I got my eye on the boat. I got my eye on the boat. As soon as we hear that whistle, we get straight to the action. Welcome back to another episode of Eyes on the Ball. And look, do you know what? I could do all the episodes, I could rehearse <laughs> everything in the world. But you guys saw what we have today. We have none other. Before I introduce my co host, we have none other. Than the beautiful game podcast live and direct in the building. Let's go. I wish I had the pure, 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 pure. <laughs> <laughs> <Going on. laughs> All right, not only do we have the beautiful game podcast, as you guys said before we started recording, this is the first time you guys have been together on someone else's platform, and it's only right that it happens on Eyes on the Ball, man. No, 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 no definitely. On. As I was saying before, big you man up, man. I love the fact that you're creating your own content you're being consistent and you're doing what you love man so big up bros appreciate, yeah, it, man. appreciate it man <sighs> yeah man and that's what it's all about really like we're just all trying to put out our own content and i mean mm-hmm. when we thought about what we would do for this episode we thought about diving into you guys and looking at your own careers and how you paved the way but we decided look came on here to talk football so let's talk football man and let's enjoy ourselves a bit and <laughs> this is a, an episode of viewpoint the show where we do our point of view obviously it's been a popular one on eyes on the ball recently we've done the top five captains we've done top five premier league champions but this episode we're going to give it a bit of a twist <clears throat> what we're going to do is we'll look at the young players in the premier league the players who've taken the premier league by storm and there's a kind of a tier that I've made for the panelists today to basically dive into, create a lot of debates. So it should be a good one. It should be a good one. Um, Definitely. What I'm gonna do... I've been looking... Yeah, go on, go on, go on. No, go on, Darren. Go on, Darren. Go on, Darren, bro. No, I was saying I've been looking forward to this one all day, man. I know the tiers are very, you know, distinct. So I want to hear what these guys think about these youngsters, man. You know, not all of these youngsters are going to pan out to be, you know, as successful as we might think, so I, I want to hear the differentiations, man. I'm looking forward to it. No, I'm liking the categories: generational yeah. talent, world class, James Milner. No, nah, there's a lot to get stuck <laughs> into, man. There's a question <laughs> a lot, mark man. category, you know. Yeah, <laughs> can we get some clarity on the question mark category? What, what's what's that about? What uh, what is cool. that? The thing is, I didn't want to bash any players by saying they're not good enough or anything like that just question mark we're not sure we don't know where you lie yet yeah 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 undecided undecided or um yeah do you know what i'm saying so just for the viewers at home what i would say is obviously they know that i'm a chelsea fan they know that daz darren is a man united fan just for the viewers at home just let us know budge dot dej in that order the teams you support and just a little bit about yourselves and then we can get straight into it Cool, sweet. I, I'm happy to kick off. Uh, Budge, um, I'm a gooner. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on the, the, the week, to be honest, at this point in time. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no I'm a Liverpool supporter. Obviously, we're not having the best of times at the moment, but we're still the Premier League champions, so you move. <laughs> really? No, no worries. Worries. 
Yeah, Dej, Liverpool fan. I'm liking the fact that Trent is on this, you know, list. He's going to be getting a lot <laughs> of, of love. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Also, just to put it out there, my second team is Crystal Palace. So, yeah. Mm. Come on. I, I, one. I, just, I, I just clocked. I just clocked. Uh, and I appreciate the fact that the, the colour um, scheme is reversed. So, the, the, the question mark um, category <laughs> is in green. I think just to make it feel like it's not, a, it's not, a, <laughs> not as bad. <laughs> it's not as bad. Yeah. <laughs> This is how I know you're a businessman because not many people will clock those details. We had to be. Had to be. <laughs> but now let's get straight into it, man. Let's get straight into it. I mean, Darren, obviously being being a um, the home guy for eyes on the ball, you can kick things off in terms of your opinion on Harvey Barnes. He's the first one on the list. Obviously, I believe he's 23 now. Leicester City. He's coming to his own. Obviously, they recalled him last season from his loan from West Brom. So and he, he's he's taken the like, you can make the argument he's taken the league by storm he's improved mm. steadily so g- give me your opinions on him and what category you think he falls under big fan of his um I was speaking to Bridge about it before we started recording uh my kind of guy throwback type baller he, I think he's unique in today's era in that I don't think he needs to have big numbers to impact the game do you know what I mean I feel like unique also in the aspect that um he's both footed throwback winger as i said um doing well uh this season taking the league by storm as you said on a great team it's not like he's doing it for a team that's you know in the bottom half of the table so i feel that that separates him as well i'd put him to put him in the category i'd say i regard him he, for me he's got all class potential in the fact that he's unique do you know what i mean in the fact that he's unique for me he's not like every he's he, He's got his own niche. And if he becomes the best version of himself, I, 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 specifically in the fact that he doesn't need numbers to impact the game, as, you know, old school wingers never had, I feel like that that he's got world-class potential for me, man. Big fan. That's, that's, mm. I mean, you, you've kicked it off nicely, man. That's why that's that's <laughs> yeah. we're here. That's, that's why we're here. Butch, give me your opinions, bro. So... You know, as obviously, you know, we just alluded to there, we were speaking off air about our appreciation and admiration for Harvey Barnes. He is certainly the kind of player that will go under the radar for a lot of people. Um, And you have to watch him in games. You know, of course, in terms of putting up numbers, he he may not necessarily be putting up the kind of numbers that other wingers may be um, putting up in the Premier League at the moment. But yeah. when you watch his impact on games, you look at how direct he is when he's got the ball, when he's making those runs off the ball. Yeah. Um, he has a, certainly a very unique skill set, and and that basically puts him in a in a in almost a category of, of his own um, because mm-hmm. you don't really see his kind of of style of of, of player uh, in this current day and age. Yeah. You know, a lot of your your wingers now are you know quick, skillful. Um, you know, very diminutive um, and, you know, because of the standards that have been set by some of the, the wingers in the Premier League in recent seasons, yeah. you know, wingers are are expected to provide and, and contribute uh, week in, week out. That being said, he has added um, additional output to his game this season. And I yeah. think that's certainly something that Brendan Rodgers would have um, taken him to the side and spoken to him about um, maybe uh, in, in the off season. You know, how how can we improve your output? And and he has been producing the goods on a more consistent basis. Yeah. Um, I think ultimately, because it, it, it will always be a game of opinions, particularly yeah. when you talk about the that, that category of world-class potential, yeah. usually people will expect... To, to, for for players in that category to be producing the goods week in week out, um, and whilst I I get the argument for him having world class potential, he, he's he's still only very young and he's adding different strings to his bow, you know, every season. Um, I I think in the long run he's probably just gonna fall just short of that category and will be in that James Milner bracket of a steady Eddie. Yeah. Um I I don't see him going to a a top team. Um I think he will probably stay um at Leicester for for quite some time. Um and I think he's just going to be that reliable guy that that will play consistently week in week out um and produce the goods but 
but will struggle to break that mold of, of world-class potential. I think mm. if he were to get a move to a, a, a bigger club, he could potentially, you know, take that step further. But yeah. in how, how I see his, um, his career trajectory, I think he will just remain in that, in that bracket, um, uh, throughout the, the duration of his career. But, 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 you know, I mean, no question, an absolutely talented player and, and one that I really admire quite a bit. Just to add to that before we move on to, to Dot, um, the reason why I put him in world class potential for me is because I agree with everything you said, Budge, but a lot of the guys in today's era, they have to have good numbers to be regarded as world class. And I see him as a guy that doesn't need that. Do you know what I mean, for me, it's not all about the, the numbers. Sometimes you watch a guy and you're like, this guy... It, a striker would love to play with a guy like him. Do you know what I mean? And that's something that I think uh, like differentiates him. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I think you say in today's game, you can appreciate a player that doesn't get numbers. But I think to be world-class, you need to now put up numbers. And we spoke to Yannick Balassi on our podcast and he said, yo, Bruno Fernandes, when I saw him play, he's changed the game for me. It's all about numbers. You can do nothing for a game. But contribute to two goals and bang, you've had a world class performance, and that's yeah. the now the new standard. So I think going back to what Bush said is when he was talking, I was thinking, and I was thinking the exact same thing. James Milner category, but are we doing that or saying that because he's English and he doesn't have that special sort of dribbling ability, or he doesn't have that special effect to take him to that Phil Foden type of yeah. elegance? Yeah. And I've watched Leicester closely this season. Um, and I think Harvey Barnes and Yuri Tillemans are probably the two most improved players in the Premier League. And I'm shocked that Tillemans yeah. ain't on this list. But yeah. for me, I can't put him in that world-class potential because when I'm naming genuinely world-class young players, I can't put him into that category. So the only category that I can put him into is James Milner category. But I think this is a, a fantastic player and he's improved so much this season. No, a question sure. to a question to that though, the point that you made. Do you think though that a guy like Harvey Barnes, he's been able to show steady improvement in his game. And just because he isn't or doesn't have that elegance like a Phil Foden, like a maybe Mason Greenwood, maybe if when we get to that, when we get to those players, don't you think that his world class potential trajectory is different to those guys? He's going to be a steady improver rather than a yeah burst onto the, the scene guy, type burst onto the scene type of guy. Yeah, yeah, you can potentially say that, but we can only go off what we've seen at the moment. Maybe true, if you came true. back to me in a year's time, I can say, you know what. Wow, he's improved so yeah. much. Brendan yeah. Rodgers is coaching him, improving his game. He's more aggressive in the final third. You yeah. know, he's scoring double digits a season. But for now, I can only take what I've seen. And from what yeah. I've seen, he falls short from that world-class potential. Fair enough, fair enough. And I, I hear what Doc was saying in terms of the numbers, man. you got, you got, you got to have the numbers to be world-class. This, this is it. This is it. Just yeah, like yeah, like the lads have covered a lot, to be honest. And I remember watching Harvey Barnes when he was on loan at West Brom and I was impressed. I was like, wow, this guy can come prem and do bits. And obviously he's made his input into the Leicester team, but putting him into that world-class mm. potential, I, I can't I can't make a case for him, in my opinion. For me, yeah. he's like a James Milner. But what I love about Harvey Barnes is he's work off the ball. In the modern day, a front three, you need to be earning your call. What are you doing off the ball? And he makes those energetic direct runs. He's always giving his opposition something to think about. But yeah. in terms of world-class, generational, I mean, generational, there's a few on this list that are going to go in there. Is Harvey Barnes that? No. Does he have world-class potential? <laughs> I can't see it. I can't, I can't make a case. Is he overrated? No. He's probably mm -hmm. a bit underrated. If I'm gonna say so, I yeah. think the slot to put him in is the James Milner. You know, sort of like a steady Eddie. He can have a career at clubs challenging for for European football, which Leicester are doing. And can he yeah. potentially move to a top four, top six team? Maybe, maybe, maybe so. Maybe a Tottenham in the future, but maybe Man City, Liverpool. I think that's out of his reach because those are probably going to be for generational world class players. And obviously, yeah. add on that English premium. 
you're looking at a hefty <laughs> amount, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> can, can I just say though, I think like the categories are a bit harsh from world class to James Milner. I think there should be something in between because you think so? Yeah, yeah. Because if you think okay, world class, and then the bracket under should be maybe top class or very good. You see what oh, I'm trying to say? Then are maybe. we not underrating James Milner by saying that? Because I think James I Milner underrating, but I think when you're talking of a James Milner, you're talking more steady Eddie. Yeah. Like, no, but yeah. I think James Milner for me means seven out of ten. World class yeah. potentials Perhaps. like eight, eight, eight out nine. of ten. Generationals like ten, nine out of ten. So I think if you break it down like that, it does make sense. Because Dej, we're basically gonna say anyone on this list that we don't feel has world class potential, just throw them into the James Milner category. And I don't think that's a true reflection Not necessarily. of the talent that we have. Not Maybe like the name mm. James Milner, but if you said okay, James Milner seven out of ten, mm. world class potential yeah, eight yeah. nine out of ten. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the way yeah. I'm looking yeah. at it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Really, we can also differentiate when we put them into the category. You okay. got what I mean? There can be tears within the category. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, like man. a two point, a, a, a two one, two two. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, I, I agree with you, man. If I'm being honest, I think you know he, he tugs at my heartstrings a little because he was my guy in FM. But um, <laughs> yeah, listen, um, the James Milner, I, I agree in terms of um, he's a steady Eddie type guy. But I definitely put him in the upper echelon of the the James Milner category. He's a two one, two one. One hundred percent. And whilst I put him there, based on the fact, based on what everyone has said. I think just to keep it short and sweet on Harvey Barnes, I actually think he's someone where the first adjective I'd use is someone who's industrious. So he makes the <laughs> yeah. most out of a bad situation. 100%. And I, and, and I believe that going forward, he's someone, he won't end his career on the wing. Do you know what I'm saying? Them kind of guys who can maybe transition their game just a bit, just to suit the time, suit mm. whatever is needed at the time. I think he's that type of guy. So, mm. yeah, man. No, that's valuable as well. That's valuable. Just no, uh, in terms of he could probably play a few positions, both sides of the wing. You got know I me? Mean? That's that's valuable. No, definitely, man. Definitely. Let's mix it up a bit. We will go with hmm, Gabriel Martinelli. 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 Um, nice. Let's start with Dej first. Let's start with Dej. This is a player that I love, man. His energy that he brings to the team is so infectious. When he starts, you know, Arsenal are a different team. And in the early spells of Arteta, like, you know, Aubameyang, Pepe, William, they sort of lack that, that devilment, hunger. that energy, hunger. That's the word, hunger. And Martinelli yeah. brings that in abundance. Like, I think he scored 10 goals in his first season. I remember him yeah. scoring against Chelsea when he just ran through the pitch. And yep. sitted Kepa and just placed it into the goal. So, for me, he's a player with world-class potential. I think this guy can go on to achieve big things in his career. But the only thing I've got is injuries. He seems to be yes. picking up these little niggles here and there. And you just hope yeah. that that doesn't curtail his career, man. Because he can play in any position across the front three. Yeah. You see him long-term probably ending up as a centre-forward. So, yeah, this guy, for me, 110% world-class potential. I hear that. Hmm. He wants Can to I go just, next. He wants to go yeah, next. Yeah, go on. It's a tough one because when you look at Martinelli, I understand what Dej is saying. He's got the energy, technique. He yeah. reminds me a bit of that Luis Suarez type of player, but he's played 18 Premier League games. He scored three goals. Is that enough for us to put him in the world-class potential category? And this is what I'm trying to say. I think the sample size needs to be considered when we make this list. And for me, he may have world-class potential, but I don't know if he is going to be world-class later on in the line. So I'm going to sit on the fence and put him in the James Milner category again. Because yeah. if we're putting Martinelli in the world-class category, where are we going to put... Phil Foden, for example. Could you could you, could you make the argument though? Generational. Yeah, generational. <laughs> could, you, generational. Not, 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 not. could you make the argument that you could put Martinelli in the question mark category? Because obviously we thought we we yeah, outlined no. question mark to be mm-hmm. where you you're undecided, you don't know how good they're gonna be. But Martinelli this, falls under that. You don't know. No, look, let me keep it real. I'm a big fan of him. Like I think yeah. he's a fantastic player. I love him. Like I love the way he plays the game. That's my style of footballer. But 
obviously he's come back from a long-term nasty injury and he hasn't looked like the player that he was last season, which is fair enough. He's young, he's recovering, it's going to take him maybe a few more months to get back to his best. So at the moment, you're right, I have to put him in that question mark category. Yeah, go ahead, Butch. Butch, what do you think? Fair, fair play. So um, funny enough, we, we actually had the opportunity to interview Francis Kajigal, who was uh, a former scout at Arsenal and who was <laughs> instrumental in, in this particular transfer. Um, and I posed a question to him. What was it about Martinelli that had you sold, essentially? Because, you know, when you, when, when, when you look at the, the transfer, he, he came from the fourth tier in Brazil. So whilst the transfer fee is, is relatively minuscule, in terms of the outlay, it still is a huge gamble on a player in terms of having the confidence that he's going to be able to step up and, and take like a duck to water. Um, and he, he, he essentially expressed that transfer as a no brainer. And, you know, go, going back to the points that Dej raised, I think I've, I've, I've got to side with him on this one in terms of where I'd, I'd rank him. And it's not just because of what I've seen him do on the pitch. Um, you know, he's 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 stepped up and he's he's scored goals. Of course, his his debut season was a, was a great one um, under Unai Emery, and he showed those glimpses again, like what uh, Dot mentioned of of a Luis Suarez. And perhaps it's the it's the um, the the hopeless romantic in me. Uh, as an Arsenal fan, in being so close to acquiring um, Luis Suarez, but 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 um, but not getting it over the line and, and wanting to fill the void uh, in some way, shape, or form, but you know, it, it's a temperament of him. I think when I look at certain young players, it's not just about their ability and what they can do with the ball at feet, but it's also the the, the makeup of the individual. And he is a guy that doesn't seem phased by the big stage. Where st he's still a teenager, you know, still, sort of, what, 18. And the fact that he, you know, has stepped up on those big occasions. I, re I recall the goal that he scored when he ran, um, you know, from the halfway line against Chelsea. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's taken the responsibility on his shoulders to be the difference maker. There have been times during this season where Arsenal have needed that that impetus, they've needed that spark, and he's come in and offered that. Um, and whilst I feel that you know out wide he is a bit underutilized, he's still um, you know contributed heavily on uh, um, on the pitch from from that wide position in terms of his pressing. He's so aggressive with with um, with with the way that he presses, and I do see his long term future being um, through the middle. Um, and and I, I can agree that the sample size is quite small, but yeah. with with certain players, you, you don't need to see too much to be able to say, you know, this this guy's going right to the top. Yeah. And and I think I, I think I, I have to side with, with Dej and put him in the in the world class potential category because you know, as as the category title suggests, it's potential. Mm. Does he have the potential? To be world class, he absolutely does. Whether he will be or not relies largely down to um, whether or not he can stay fit and yeah. how well Arsenal build a team around him. But if all those boxes are ticked, then I think there is no question and no doubt in my mind that this guy will be world class. Yeah, you guys touched on a lot regarding him. Um, I, what I like about him is he's got a mature game. Like out of these youngsters, he's probably literally one of the most mature guys that I see um in the Premier League. From when even in his first season, um, as you said, Bush, the way that he presses, even defensively. Like if he's playing on the wing, he'll give it he'll do his job defensively. Um I, I agree with uh Doc also in the fact that it's a small sample size, but from what we've seen so far, I like the maturity of his game. I like um he took like a duck to, to water in terms of a lot of these youngsters, they're not physically ready. They're not mentally ready. Physically, I think he's ready. Mentally, you dove into the anecdotes, which he's ready. So um, I think it's just about him, you know, growing. Uh, obviously, with age, he'll mature some more. But um, I, I would definitely agree with you guys in terms of world-class potential, man. I, I think you need opportunity yeah. at Arsenal. But um, 
I just love the maturity of his game. That's what stands out for Bro, me. The guy's from the favela, man. You understand? In Brazil, the slums in the Brazil. Man, I'm seeing that as a built different. The man a built different, bro. I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you. man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, I totally but... get you, man. The thing is, for me, um, do you know what? I agree. He's going to go in the world-class potential, obviously, based on the numbers, based on um, who who's voted what. The reason why I do side a bit with Dot is, and the question mark doesn't come with the fact that he will be a good player. I think we can see that he has the capabilities of being someone like top quality player. And just the question marks do come with the injuries. I mean, he's basically he's practically missed this whole season. Let's let's like he's played what two games in the Premier this year, I think something like that. Last season, he mm. wasn't really trusted to play a lot of games. Obviously, I know he had a good season in terms of his output, playing in the Carabao Cup and whatnot. But again, the Premier League is where your career is going to be made and where things are going to be decided. And the question mark just lies is, will we be able to have that longevity? Will he have that? Will he have enough? Will he have that season that will get him that big move? Because injuries, can, can we, we've seen it. Like, let's, let's even look at Van Persie. Van Persie should have had that Man United move years ago, if we're being honest. Do you know what I'm saying? Because of, because of how good he was. He was only, he only showed it at the latter end of his career. Do you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah. quick question, then, yeah? So what, you don't Go think on. he can become world-class at Arsenal? I don't, um, no, he can't. He can't. I'm being honest. I don't think he can. Wow. That means you, you... Arsenal are basically finished in your eyes. Then they're no more toxic club. Arsenal yes. are... No, let's, let's take. Can I ask why, Daniel? Banter aside, the current setup of Arsenal doesn't allow it to happen. Arsenal, in terms of their recruitment, Arsenal, in terms of um, their decisions now post Wenger, Arsenal, in terms of how they how they're coached, how they can you if competing ask, for trophies? Yeah, competing for. Uh, if I ask you, Budge, yeah, how mm-hmm. close do you think Leicester are to taking your spot as a top? Six club, if if like if we're making it top seven, but how close do you think mm. Leicester are to being above you in terms of like stature. competing? Yeah, mm. competing, not stature, but competing, isn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. So of course, like you've got to judge um, them separately, right? So stature is a completely different argument. Of course, but you can't in terms them. of in terms of competing, I wouldn't say that they're, they're very far off. There are, a, I, I think, mo- most of the the Leicester starting eleven walk into. Arsenal's starting eleven right now. To be to be completely honest with you, but what what I will say to your point around um, you not feeling that he could be world class at Arsenal given the current circumstances are that you know there's been a lot of change since Wenger's left, yeah. but this is a completely new regime, and we we've, we've seen now under Arteta and and Edu the direction that the club wants to move in. The first step was, of course, trying to get a lot of the high earners off the wage bill and a lot of the players that are considered dead wood. Um, And it it appears that both those guys working in tandem are very clear on the direction that they want the club to move in. Um, Whilst there has been a lot that has been done in the wrong way, I am filled with some confidence with the signings of players like Thomas Partey, for example, because that indicates to me that the club are moving in the right direction in terms of the profile of yeah. player that they're going after in the market. Now, of yeah. course, Thomas Partey has had his own injury issues and and, and whether he lives up to his billing is, is remain to be seen. But, you know, again, just referring back to that point around the profile of the player and identifying who they want to fit into the philosophy of a Mikel Arteta, I feel like the club is moving in the right direction. And I I appreciate it's going to take some time. Rome wasn't built in a day, but at least the the foundation is being laid and and, and, and the the blocks are being built for that to come to fruition in, 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 in the near future. We were crying out for a creative midfielder. And on Twitter, every Arsenal fan was talking about the kind of profile we'd need. And the fact that, um, the club was able to identify Odegaard as a potential option true, true. fills us with confidence. At least you guys see what we see as fans. Um, yeah. and, and, and that that does fill you with some some degree of, of, of confidence. And I think, you know, if we can get Arteta's imprint on this team and we can um, use our resources, our limited resources, in mm. the most effective way going forward, 
And like I said, going back to um, how this works with Martinelli in particular, if the plan is to move him centrally and build a team around him, as long as we recruit in the in in the right way with the kind the right kind of profile, you have to also remember that there are young players at the club that will go through that pr uh, process and transition with him as well. You've got players on this list as well, like Emil Smith Rowe and Bakaya Saka. You yeah. you 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 put those kind of players around the Martinelli, and you're 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 setting him up with the the, the perfect backdrop to go on and realize his potential. Um, yeah, so I, I wouldn't look at it necessarily as what has been in the past few years. I, I look more at what what could be, uh, yeah, in the next few years. No, hundred percent. Just before we move on, in it, on. in terms of yeah, just a quick point in terms of wow, well, dis not disagree with you, Bush, but ask another question. Not to dive into the rabbit hole, but you know, the Williams signing doesn't indicate that you know. <laughs> 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 like you're, you're saying similar to the David Luiz sign. Like David Luiz should be long gone. Like these these older guys that are it even took Arteta to stumble across the fact that the young G's are the future. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they're there now. They're not only the future, they're there now. He stumbled across that and I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You got Martin me on that William one. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that William one. That one, that one made no sense. I think David Luiz. They just gave him an uh, an extension. That was more so to help um, Gabriel um, uh, Bedin, Gabriel yeah, Magalhaes. Yeah, yeah. It was really for him because obviously he's coming from a different league and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, he needs a familiar face, uh, a more experienced player. But I, I don't see Arsenal extending um, uh, uh, David Luiz contract. Is going to be a great experiment, though, just to see how things things pan out with him. Mm. Go on, Daniel. Next one. No, you, we'll definitely. Yeah, we'll see how things we'll see how things pan out. And to be honest, with me, you will see as the as the episode develops that Darren knows me already. I'm like the strictest guy when it comes to world class talent and the world class category. So my criteria is very very strict, and I know it might exclude a lot of things, but it's it's a strict criteria and it works for me in it. But we'll, mm. we'll we'll keep it moving. We'll find That's out like later me, on. <laughs> fam, fam, and Dot, do you know what? I'm gonna come to you. You pick a player, talk about okay. him, and then we'll keep it moving. Cool. You know what? I'm gonna go with <laughs> Callum Hudson Adoy. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! Controversy, controversy, <laughs> my boy. <laughs> Yeah, so to kick things off on Callum, obviously, you know, it's highly rated. England under-19s, one of the top talents. But people put him above the likes of Sancho's and, you know, say that he's on par with the Foden's in terms of talent. And no disrespect to him, when I watch him, I don't see it. And I know that the Chelsea fans have a special affiliation to their young players and they've got, you know, a very... So, some amazing chemistry with Callum that they love him so much and he's the next best thing and he's their best player or whatever yeah but it's all at Daniel by the way all at Daniel yeah yeah if I'm being totally I, I, want, honest, I want Dr. to land I want Dr. I, land. I think he's a good player do I think he's potentially world class no because when I'm looking at this list I see so many more talents that are ahead of him which I won't even rank as world class potentially so for me it hurts me to say because I like the lad. I think he's a very good player and I think he will get better once he has a run of games in the first team. But I'm going to put him in the overrated category. I like it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Do you know it. what? Before I respond now, uh, let's let's go to you, Dej. Dej, I want to hear what you think. Bro, I've always said this, that I think that take is harsh. This is a guy that has had the potentially career-ending Achilles injury. One of my boys, he worked, he used to work at Arsenal, like the youth team squads, and he came up against Callum and he said, you know what, this boy is the best 15-year-old that I've ever seen. And obviously that takes into account the Sancho's, the Brewsters. Yes, he has not shown that form, but that's largely down to injuries. Like, how can you expect a man to come back and be showing world-class form? And for me... He's now going to benefit under Thomas Tuchel. Like Germany, they love him. The Bayerns, the Dortmunds. He's yep. got massive stocks over there. I think over here, people are a bit sceptical. And I want to see how he's going to develop because what I'm seeing from Callum right now 
is that devilment to do something in the final third. Okay, I'm going to make a meaningful impact. I'm going to cross the ball. I'm going to take my man on. I'm going to beat him. I'm going to assist. And I think if we give him more and more time, I think he will show that he's got world-class potential. I think people have judged him too quickly, too harshly. And let's give him to the end of the season and see what numbers he posts up and the performances because I see like a maturity um, yeah. behind him. I see like mentally he seems on par. He seems at it. What he's saying that, yeah, Thomas Tuchel wants me to do this. This is how I'm trying to influence my game. And people don't see what he does behind the scenes. Like this is a guy that a couple months ago, he rented out a pitch saying, you know what? I want to improve my durability. I need to get better. Yeah. I want to make myself a better player. So I think... Yeah, man, I'm not going to go along with these Twitter comments. Ah, oh, he's shit, he's the next. <laughs> I think boy's got world-class potential. Can I just add, like, I'm not here to say he's a bad player or I think yeah. he's rubbish. I think he's a very good talent. But when it comes to putting him into a category, I think as of now, he's overrated. And it's funny mm. because I spoke to two agents. One agent said, yes, he's the best 14-year-old that he's ever seen. Like, this guy is top. You get what I'm trying to say? Then I spoke to yeah. another agent and he was like, no, I don't see it. I don't I don't know what the hype is. So this is a player that does divide opinions. And for me, as things stand, as of today, he's an overrated talent. Daniel, I might as well just go straight ahead because I I, I think he's one of the most interesting people um, on the, 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 the pool that we have. And it, it's, it, it's evident in the fact that obviously um, Dot's got him overrated and Bridge has got him more class. For me... Sorry, my bad. Um, for me, I'm leaning more towards Doc in the fact that I think he's a good player. I think he is. The the the, the, the hype around him is excessive. That's why I put him in the world, in the overrated aspect. In terms of the way that he's regarded, for me, is not indicative of what I've seen from him. You know what I'm saying? And I, maybe, you know, as a Chelsea fan, Daniel, you, you've seen him all, you've got more insight. As a, man, as man a, has had an injury. Uh, and but, Edge, but that is part of the point as to why, regardless of the injury, yes, unfortunate, it's really sad to see him, a young boy, get injured. But that is part of the point as to why I feel he's overrated. He's been injured mm -hmm. for a year. He hasn't done much on the football field. So, yes, I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm saying that the injury... Is playing a part to my did, opinion. Did you because, watch the World yeah. Cup under yeah, seventeen? But Ted, World that Cup is not final. the level. That's not the level. Of course, that I can say that's the point. To put that's him as a world class talent, he has been injured that's... for more time as a professional in the Chelsea first team. But the glimpses that I've seen from him, I think he can do bits. I think he can potentially be a world class player. Yes, the moments have been fleeting. But as I'm saying, this season, give him to the end of the season, I think he will show under Tuchel, someone that likes him. In the German market, these people love him. You know, Dortmund won him, Bayern wanted him. I think under Tuchel, he's going to show what he's about, man. That's Again, what got, just last one, last one on this, like, because, go on, go on. like, you lot will think I'm trying to throw shade, and that's not the case. Like, mm. nah, he, I when I look at him, Although he's younger than Harvey Barnes, I see more potential in Harvey Barnes than Callum Hudson. Oh, no, 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 I 100% agree with Dej in the fact that mm. the injury is huge, especially for a young guy. Like, no, one, uh, it's hard to expect him to have a huge season coming off that injury. But my argument would be prior to the injury, I wasn't really, I didn't regard him. <laughs> I didn't regard him the way other people did. Like, from what I saw, obviously, I wasn't, I wasn't, I hadn't watched him at, I didn't watch him at the under 17 World Cup, as you mentioned. I hadn't seen him in the Chelsea under 15s and stuff like that. But from what I saw of him in his Premier League appearances, when, before the injury, I thought that he was overrated, and I can't lie, nothing's before, changed. Before, before, before Budge, obviously, Budge is going to have the, the like, he's going to be the icebreaker basically deciding it because obviously, there's <laughs> one world class potential. You guys already know where I'm going to put him. Um, <laughs> the, the, the point to what every everyone has made, and look, do you know what I hear Dot's argument in terms of the injuries? 
and that's a fact I use for the Gabriel Martinelli thing, and that's why I said I was mm -hmm. unsure. However, what I would say in terms of sample size is, if you're saying before the injury you didn't rate him like that, you clearly didn't watch the Europa League campaign under Sarri, where he played basically every single game till the final. He, he again, I can't believe he... Level, yeah, but Daniel, it's not... No, it's not no, a no, on again, again, it's not the level. On what I'm talking about is... Think about it. I'm talking about sample size. And one of the biggest things that's been against... I don't even think the injury has been the biggest thing against Callum hudson -Odoi. It's been opportunities. Let's look at every single guy on this list, yeah? Callum hudson -Odoi is the one guy who's shown talent but isn't given the chance to play. And what is the one consistent theme in every single fan, whether it be Chelsea fans or rival fans? How is this guy not playing ahead of some of the guys who are starting? The reason why you're saying that is because you can clearly see that this guy is one of the most talented players at the club, if not one of the best wingers at the club, and he's still not playing. Every, everyone was saying it. It was a consistent theme. How is this? How is Lampard not starting him? Lampard never started him three times in a row. He never got back-to-back-to-back -back -to -back starts under Lampard, which goes to show that he wasn't even considered. Well, maybe not, maybe Lampard just didn't regard him as highly as you did. That's the point. This is this is. But then he end. doesn't have his job now, so clearly he was wrong. <laughs> no, no, he might have been right, <laughs> but I have been wrong about it. Because, <laughs> because in, in, in the same breath, Daniel, uh, in the same breath, didn't Lampard? Um, he was very, very much so behind Mason Mount, and he was he was he wrong to play Mason Mount as much as he did? We're seeing That's now Mason Mount. There's shouts for him to go to the Euros, and 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 they're they're justified because he's been a very consistent performer when when, when playing. No, but I, I think there was, he was like irresponsible with his handling on Mason Mount. There was a time where there was no wingers in the squad. Callum hudson Doy was the only fit winger in the squad. And Mason Mount still played on the wing ahead of hudson Doy. That's inexcusable, in my opinion. Inexcusable. I don't care if you think Mason Mount is your system guy. He's the main guy in your team. There's a winger who, it's not like a... A, a, a 35 year old winger who you're trying to ease out of the club who doesn't deserve to play he needs mm. to play how do you, how do these young players develop into world class or world class players they need to play it's opportunities that's what it comes mm. down to we, mm. let, let me let me just it's a rhetorical question but if you give Hudson Odoi the same amount of appearances Bukayo Saka has had Martinelli has had in an Arsenal team you think Hudson Odoi wouldn't be starting week in week out for Arsenal he would be facts. He yeah, would. would he producing at the rate Saka is though? That's the point. Would Bro, he be producing? Saka the was like third in the league in assists last season, and this season a big the time thing, season. The thing is, the thing is, I can't show you all the graphics and everything behind it. And if you lot follow Chessy Hour, you would know. Me, me and Chessy Hour, we always talk all the time, and we have agendas because we have all the stats, we have all the data to show this guy is in the world class potential. Obviously. You can go on and on about it, but Butch, you just decided, man. You break, you break it down. Um, I, I, I've got to go with Daz on this one, and I'd put him in that um, question mark um, category because there's there's just far too many question marks. I think ultimately he is he he's a victim of the fanfare around him on Twitter. Yes, yes. If, yeah, if, yeah, if yeah. everyone just allowed him to just get on and do his 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 business, like. You know, then, then there wouldn't be so much of an issue. But because everyone talks him up and there's so much hype around him, when that doesn't translate on the pitch, I, I appreciate he might not have had the the number of chances that other players uh, may may have had. But with the with with the hype that is surrounding his name, when he does play, he has to be producing the goods. And yeah. if he's not played consistently, then ultimately it's because he's not producing the goods when he has been selected and, and chosen. And for that reason, all things considered, injury, so on and so forth, you know, he he, he might well have world cast but cast potential. But yeah. for me, there, there there are there are far too many question marks around him Fair right enough. now to put him in that category. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. I mean, we can we can move on swiftly as I'm burning inside, as you can imagine. <laughs> um, Dead. Pick a you player know. and give us your thoughts. Daniel, I think it would be good for you to just name the player, you know. Oh, do you think so? You can't see yeah. properly. Or what do you think? No, I can see them. But Dej, what do you think? No, um, I'll pick one. Um, Bakayo Saka. This is a uh, very, very interesting one. This is a player very, that I just really. love. Like, again, on the eye, he might not have that silky flair. But what I love about him is his temperament. He's decision making. He's so so efficient, and in my opinion, he's the most important player right now at Arsenal. 
you know, last season, yeah, everyone's like, yeah, it's a Bama Yang, but he's taking the mantle. Like, this is a guy that shows initiative. He puts Arsenal on his back. He wants to be that boy, that reference point, that when you look at him, you're looking at Arsenal Football Club and, you know, the numbers that he posts up from different positions, you know, left back, right mid, he can play central midfield. He's so versatile. But I've always said I want him to stay in one position because I don't mm. want him to become a jack of all trades, a master of none. And I yeah. think, yeah, he it's an interesting one because on his IQ, decision-making, everything like that, you'll call him a generational talent. But mm. in terms of maybe how he looks and stuff like that, you call him a world-class <laughs> talent. So I'm sort of stuck in the... <laughs> no, no, obviously aesthetic. I hear that, he's I not, actually hear that. He's, yeah. not, he's not got a footballer's um, gate. Yeah, that's that's the issue. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a it's an interesting one, isn't it? I need I need a moment or so just to make up my mind because again, like we we speak to his team and stuff, and the trajectory that this boy is on, he's going to the top, and his life away from football, he lives, you know, like a monk. He doesn't drink, he doesn't smoke. You yeah. know, he wants to maximize his talents, man, and. And I like him. Like when he talks, he speaks well. He speaks with an old head and young shoulders. Um, is he a generational talent? I don't want to use that word. I don't think many players in there should be going into that category. Yeah, so exactly. I'm gonna yeah. stick my colours into the mast and I respect the categories and say he's got world class potential. Mm -hmm. Just to give my two cents real quick, I think the word that you use that describes him perfectly is efficiency. Like, I don't think he's got a lot of high-end... In terms of... I don't think he's got world-class potential, but I think he's going to be a guy that's not going to make a lot of mistakes throughout his career. Do you know what I'm saying? He's going to be a guy that you can rely on throughout... Wherever he goes, he's going to be a steady Eddie. For me, he's more of a James Milner type guy. I think the production is very impressive, but I feel like he hasn't got... The, the potential is not as high as some of the other guys that um we have on this list. I like him a lot, big fan. And again, I don't think the James Mo the James Mo James Mo had a very impressive career. James Mo has won wherever he's gone. He's been a pivotal player wherever he's gone. Similar as um attributes in the fact that they're both utility guys. I think that's gonna be depending obviously um on who the manager is managers are throughout his career that will determine how they use him. But I think that's gonna be something that. Because he's done it as a youngster, managers are going to look at that and be like, he's more of my utility guy type of guy. Um, but Dan, don't I've... you think that James Milner's for like seven out of ten? I, I see Saka yeah. getting like eights, nines out of tens. And look, let's, don't let's you think keep that? it yeah, real. That's Arsenal, though. Okay. No, but let's <laughs> keep it real. When we think James Milner, we think Steady Eddie. Um, yes yeah. or no? So that's why yeah. I feel there's a tear in between that top class. No, but do you think he? Do you, do you think he? Do you think he's the bottom of world class potential or the top of James Milner category? That's the question. Mm. Is that a question? Good to question. Me? Top of James Milner for That's me. Question. James Milner. Top yeah. of James Milner. For you, no, I agree with. I agree with Dej. I agree with Dej. I'm going to put him in the world class category. I was speaking to his um, one of his representatives the other day, and I was just texting him, and I was like, "Okay, look, I got a question for you. Does Bakaya Saka?" at 19, remind you of Raheem Sterling when he was breaking through at Liverpool? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, like, they picked the right decisions in the final third. They're, they're not great at anything, but they're very hard to knock off the ball. They're very strong. They're dribbling. It's just consistent. They just beat players. And I think that's why I have to put him in the world-class category because when I look at Raheem Sterling's trajectory from his days at Liverpool at 18, 19 to now... He's now one of the elite wingers in the world. And I think Saka is a very similar player to a young Raheem Sterling. So I have to put him in that world-class potential. Is Raheem world-class though? That's the question I ask. Because listen, he is another guy that brings a lot of controversy. I want to hear what you guys think in terms of is Raheem world-class? I can understand yeah. why people can yeah. say, oh, Raheem Sterling isn't a world-class player because sometimes he doesn't make the cleanest contact with the football. But listen, this is a guy that's been posting up numbers for five, six that's years it. now. That's he it. has to be considered in that world-class category. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Now, t do you know what? Yeah. Before, Bud before Budge goes, I'm going to be the villain in this one. There's no way in hell, I'm sorry, Bukayo Saka, who I love, 
is in the world class potential. No way. <laughs> And I'm yeah, sorry. but Daniel, they, so this this goes back to my argument. There's no way Callum Hudson Odoi can be in the world class potential bracket for you. But Bakaya Saka, who's done more, who's do, been Arsenal's best you know player what? for the last twelve months, can't be put into into that bracket. And, and this is what I'm saying. This is where the biases come into place. Hundred yeah. percent. And yeah. there's no there's no like who can I disagree with when someone tells me I'm biased if I put. Hudson Odoi in the world class protect. Of course yeah. I am. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to break down to you in terms of when I look at <laughs> when I look at someone like Bukayo Saka is that do I think he's gonna go on to win his team trophies and be the reason why his team wins trophies? No, I don't think so. I think and just like Darren pointed out, I think he is at the top end of that James Milner category where he's going to be a useful member of the squad but not an integral member of the squad and that's what that's how I see it I don't think it's disrespectful to say that because at the end of the day when I look at for example again sorry to bring up Hudson Odoi again if I look at their comparisons Hudson Odoi has played four years has had four years in the, in, in the Premier League Bukaya Saka has had two years in the Premier League and Saka's already started over double the amount of games and the opportunities have been there for his talent to be seen. That's the point I keep coming back to you. And my thing is, if someone, when I look at Hudson Doy and Saka, and if I'm thinking in my head that I know that Hudson Doy is the better player, yet he hasn't had the same amount of opportunities, I'm seeing Saka perform with these, with the same, like, what we're seeing is the Saka. Do you know what I'm saying? We haven't even mm-hmm. seen Hudson Odoi at his peak and he's still being able to perform off crumbs. That's the point I'm just making. And that's why <laughs> I still think Saka, I just don't think Saka is in that world class potential category. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, Daniel, Daniel, my, Daniel, my, my question to you, Daniel, yeah, is you, you compared the two of them in terms of the opportunities that they've each received. Yeah. What, what guarantee do you have? that Hudson Odoi going forward is going to receive any more opportunity or or his his number of game time like his number of games is going to vastly increase because Ch- Chelsea are in a very different situation to Arsenal in that whatever Roman Abramovich feels he doesn't have he just goes out and buys so if 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 um Hudson Odoi had this potential or he, he was as good as it's been, it's been made out why did they go and buy Ziyech in the summer? Why, why not? Why not just give him more opportunity? Why is um, uh, I forget the name? What's the, the, the name of the German forward that plays out Havertz. on the left now? Not oh, Havertz. Werner. 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 He's he's playing out of position in 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 a in a, in a wide position. Why why isn't Hudson Odoi getting those chances? Very what good I'll question. Say is, what I'll say is there's no guarantees in football and we obviously all know that. However, what I will say and what I will guarantee is that Thomas Tuchel likes Hudson mm. Odoi. He yep. sees mm. Hudson Odoi as a very, very big player, an instrumental mm. player to his system. In that so wing back as... position, isn't it? That wing back. That... <laughs> <Poor guy. Yeah. laughs> wing back. I mean, in the, in, yeah, in the last two games... In the last two games, though, he's played in the inside forward <laughs> position. So against Sheffield United when he came on and against Tottenham where he started, he played the inside forward. So he's, he's going to rotate between those two positions. But what I'm saying is, insofar as Tuchel is the manager of Chelsea, Hudson Odoi will be playing. So I'm saying, watch this space, <laughs> Hudson Odoi, we're going to see the real Hudson Odoi in it. <laughs> so cool. where are we putting Saka? Well, where are we putting Saka, though? I, oh, I yeah. I, I, I had... Yeah, yeah, but... The only thing I I have to say on this is, right, no matter where he's played, he's put up numbers. Left back, left mid, right mid, number 10, wherever you play Saka, his decision-making, his final ball, his creation, his output doesn't diminish. Yeah. And at 19 years old, to have that, um, to have that in your locker, to be able to play and, and produce those numbers regardless of and, and, and influence the game from whichever position you're being played in. Yeah. I mean, going back to the point, so I can't remember who'd raised the point about him being a useful member of the team. If you're being played in all of those various positions and you're putting up those kind of numbers, you you have to be regarded as integral. How, how can you not, you know? Like, when, uh, when he doesn't play, Arsenal look a significantly worse side. So how can he not be considered integral to the team? I I I can't agree with that but statement. I think I think for me though the difference is is just because you're integral to your team 
doesn't necessarily mean that it will translate to because when we when, when I'm thinking of world yeah, class Daniel, that doesn't what I'm matter. thinking of is Daniel, that doesn't matter though. Do you think so? I, it I think it does. Because, I think it does. Because we're looking at someone like Jack Grealish, for me, world class footballer. Forget do, all of that if he's gonna do it. No, 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 the reason why you're saying that, though, is because you believe that Jack Grealish, if he makes that big move, his game will translate. Whether you believe it subconsciously or it's not um, at the forefront of your mind, do you honestly believe if Saka goes to a yeah. Man City or a Liverpool... Are you saying he won't go to the And I go back... And I go nah. back. I'm harsh as well. I, I, I'm not quick to say this person's going to be world class, but I go back yeah. to my point to Raheem Sterling. When Raheem Sterling made that move from Liverpool to Man City, people were saying, yeah. Oh, Pep Guardiola, he's not going to hack it there. He's going to eventually no, be faded enough. out. And that's look what he's point. done. He's made the step up because he that's has world point. class potential. No, that's a good point. And that's fair enough. Well, and obviously, my last point work. on this before we move on, Daniel, in it, I think. Yeah. Okay, we've got him at Bowlcast, but why I said James Milner, I think he's probably one of the best players on this list at the moment. I just think his trajectory isn't as great as some of the other guys. That's my only thing. Calm. Let's let's make things a bit interesting then and go to someone who might divide opinion. Mason Greenwood. Um, Dej, I'm going to come to you on Mason Greenwood. Where do you think Mason Greenwood belongs? This one's, this one's another tough one, man, because when you look at the player's ability, left foot, right foot, he slaps it. He's a natural-born goal scorer. And I think I even asked Jermaine Defoe on our podcast, like, because he's one of them bagsmen. He knows strikers. And he's like, you know what? This boy, he's going to the top. This yeah. guy's got everything, but I think the question marks are more off the field, you know. Since that yeah. incident, Iceland, <laughs> it's probably ruffled him up and he hasn't had the impact. He's not, this season, he's looked a bit ruffled, to be honest. He hasn't looked himself. Last season, like, burst onto the scene, scoring goals, Europa League, league, deciding games, slapping yeah. it. I remember a game against Aston Villa. Left, right. so, <laughs> ability... He's got ability, generational. I think he's got generational talent. I'm not going to lie because for me, when he burst onto the scene and when Rashford burst onto the scene, I had more stocks on, on Mason Greenwood. He looked more like a player that had that longevity at the top, in my opinion. But it's just whether he can package the off the field and that's where he needs a good team around him. But yeah. if he can harness everything together... Oh, I think this one's a tough one, man. Because generational is like it's a sacred word, you know. You don't. Are you mad? You know what? I'm gonna go world class potential, man. I think the ability. Uh, I think he's got everything. World class potential, man. I hear it. There. Stop. We have this argument in our group chat: who's the bigger talent, Saka or Greenwood? And I always shade on Greenwood. Um, but yeah. then I've been watching the Premier League more, watching both of them closely, and I'm starting to think, hmm, have I overrated Greenwood and underrated Saka? So this is a tough one because, as Dez said, I think he's got the potential to be a world-class player. Like, the, the ability to shoot off of both feet like that is just yeah. unreal. But I think, what else do you have to, the, to your game? And I yeah. think defenders have kind of found him out this season so they don't let him get that shot off early and all of a sudden you start to see him ineffective in game so I think he needs to improve his all-round game to become a world-class player and I yeah. think last season when I saw him I was like oh my days this is the maddest talent I've seen in years like I genuinely yeah. thought this guy is too cold like he's going to the top generational kind of stuff but I think as Dez said the off the field incidents that have you know coming front into the media spotlight and his lack of goals this season, I'm going to have to put a question mark against him. Although I think he's a world-class talent right now for me, yeah, yeah. there's a question mark. And that's important. Mm. As of this moment, of course, we understand mm. that some of these players can be go on to become world-class. But as of this moment, it's your opinion of where you no, think he's a baller, this player is right now. Yeah, Definitely he's a baller. Oh, oh. Serious ball. I think it's the goal against Sheffield United in lockdown where he, the, the, the goalkeeper even says... Don't 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 let him cut in. Don't let him cut in. <laughs> Goes the other way and smashes it in. <laughs> Top in. Like, I know so. it's the goal against West Ham, by the way. One touch out of his feet under, and then half volley into the far corner. No back lift. Yeah. But that's the thing. All these things that we're saying were last season and were half. Well, that was this season. season. That's that was his only goal game. this season. That's his only goal this season. 
Just uh, yeah, I think he's then. yeah, one or two in the Premier. But listen, one, let, me, let me give you like, one, the reason why two says one. Green one. <laughs> yeah, listen. No, 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 think... Darren, 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 hold on. I want you to go last. Obviously, United there's gonna uh, be United back. Go so. go um, I think Dot hit the nail on the head with his analysis on uh, Greenwood. There, to be to be quite honest, I think um, I think the issues that he's had off the field. I'm. It, it might sound a bit weird, but I'm 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 happy that he had them at this stage of his career yeah. because I would hope that he would have he he'd learn from them, and he's got all the time now in 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 his career to make amends and 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 change his off the field antics and whatnot. And so I, I hope that he's he's learned his lesson early. Yeah. Um, and if he can apply himself and, and get that stuff right, then he's got he's got enough time to turn his game around, to add those extra bits to his game, to improve his all-round game. I think also, again, whilst it's, it's, it's not the best for him at this moment in time, of course, he'd prefer to play uh, closer to the goal um, as the, 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 the number nine. But the fact that he's having to play out wide and the fact that defenders have kind of clocked his his game forces him to adapt and forces him to add more strings to his bow. And I think him playing out wide is gonna is gonna force him to to improve other areas of his game so that when he does then move closer to the goal and play in that central position, he's he's gonna have a bit more about him than just being able to shoot with minimal backlift and and, yeah. and, and be able to strike the ball, you know. The 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 top strikers that are earning their coin in the game now have so much more to them than goal scoring. And if yeah. and if you don't if you can't produce or, or offer more than just goals, you're gonna very, very quickly be weeded out. And I remember um listening to some bund- some pundits speak about um Ollie Watkins um after his performance recently um uh, over the past few weeks and and speak about just how much he offers outside of goal scoring. And for me in particular, I, I really appreciate his industry and the fact that he's always running into channels. He's always um, creating space for other runners. And, um, and, and I think, you know, if Mason Greenwood does, um, you know, work on his overall game, like, like Dot mentioned, then absolutely he's got potential to be world-class. There are shades of Robin, Robin Van Persie um, yeah. in, in his play. And, you know, if he, if he you know, we, we speak about the fact that Robin Van Persie could have been uh, on a different level if he just stayed fit. Um, so if he could sort of mould his game around him, because he was great at bringing other players into, uh, into play and, and his combination and link-up play as well. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've got a, definitely a, a potentially world class player on our hands in Mason Greenwood. And just quickly before Darren, before you go, um, for me, look, I'm someone who, when I saw him again break onto the scene, I thought generational straight away, the way he mm-hmm. could finish both feet, do this. But it's kind of like we've seen the phases of Greenwood. That's what I've called it, the phases of Greenwood. So we've seen that generational ability. Then he's kind of regressed a bit as it got to the back end of last season and going into this season. And then just this season now, or as of this present moment, I think the question marks are there in terms of can he unlock that new level in terms of when you look at Oli, maybe you could give Oli a bit of the responsibility and not being able to coach him or change his game a bit so that he can be successful or be in the best position possible. I think this season he's only got about three goals in all competitions because to my mind, I remember the West Ham game, I remember the Liverpool um, FA Cup game and I don't remember another goal that he scored this season. So it's like, if he's not scoring, what's he providing to the team? And then if you can't point to what he's providing to the team, what is he actually doing in the starting lineup? And those are the questions you have to ask. Again, he is a very, very young player and deserves a chance to grow and develop. But as of this present moment, you can't go from scoring 10 goals in the league one year and you're allowed... It's, it's, it's tough, man, because these men are young and they're allowed to go through yeah. phases. But when you've shown us something, just like you kind of pointed out to us, you have to maintain it at least just a bit you can't go from scoring 17 goals in all comps to having two goals in all comps this year mm. i just think that's a huge regression as in it's not like you don't have to get 17 and then 19 at least get 17 and then you get maybe like eight eight is a down year one is uh <laughs> like uh <laughs> the adjective <laughs> Yeah, no, listen i think I, I hear what you man are saying um I, I, listen i'm a united fan uh, before I give my, you know, where I rank him, I think we're being a bit harsh in terms of judging him based on what he's done this season. I believe, you know, he 
the, he got targeted by the media. You know, he yeah. was a lot like a lot of uh, media outlets were sticking on him. You know, trying to use him as a target. Do you know what I mean? I, and I think that definitely hindered his development, and uh, he struggled this season. I don't think it helps that we've got two guys in terms of centre forward that are in front of him in the pecking order. He hasn't got much opportunity actually banging through the middle this season. Obviously, Marshall and Cavani are, are ahead of him in that that instance. Um, and I agree with uh, what you guys said. I can't remember who said it, but in terms of playing out on the wing, is good for his development. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but not all progress is linear. Sometimes t- taking a step back to take steps forwards in the future, that, that is beneficial. Do you know what I mean? And again, in terms of the numbers, Daniel, I understand that it's like he's taken steps back this season, but I believe his um, his overall game has improved. He's beating a man. He's going to, um he's going wide on his right foot, crossing the balls into the box, um, and he overachieved based on the numbers last season. Like a youngster coming in and scoring seventeen goals, I don't yeah. think anyone expected that. So to say that he has to meet that this season, I think is a bit harsh. Um, in terms of ranking, I got him generational talent. For me, special wow. player. Um, as you guys said, shades of Van Persie. Um, listen, I won't, I won't, you know, shove it under the rug. I, I am biased, but um, for me, Mason Green was just a special player, fam. In terms of a striker, at the end of the day, it's his job to score goals. Do you know what I mean? When he's in his prime, really and truly, I know we want a guy over overall game, but if he's giving you thirty goals a season, you're you're, you're my main man. Do you know what I mean? Regardless. So, um, and, and I see that as his ceiling. Um, yeah, man, I, I just love the kid, man. I think that when, once given the opportunity, <laughs> once given the opportunity, yeah, he, yeah he's going to do a man. Hey, you heard it here first. Mason Green with 25 every year at his best. Man. Oh, All right, cool. Man. So, where, where, what was the ranking? So, I was questioning yeah, what, like, what was you? I said general. Uh, um, I think, oh, well, I think based potential. on what everyone said, yeah, me yeah, and Dot said a question mark. Budgen so Dead two, said um, Okay, so this is in the middle sort of thing, basically. So in the, you have to put world class potential, yeah. I'll yeah. put world class potential because Darren gave him generational. So <laughs> <got him. laughs> even, even if I put him at world class potential, it's three to two anyway, so don't watch that. <laughs> fair enough. No, fair enough. What I would say, right, I'm, cool. not, I'm not trying to make on, rules, but I think if you have more than one person putting a question mark on your name, yeah. I think you should go into question mark. Yeah, but the question marks aren't why are because that, that's many half of the panel having doubts on it. No, 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 I agree. But why are you putting him in the question mark category? Is what I'd for, say for everything that I said. I said that he's got world class. Darren, potential. if, if, if I made it, the... yeah, but if he's got world class, doesn't even suit that he's Darren. in that category. But nearly Darren, every single player on this list has world class potential, and that's an argument. Yeah, no, you could definitely argue that. Definitely, that's why. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. But do you see the reason why I'm just to because I want to move on swiftly? But the reason why I was bringing up the p- production is I'm not saying he needed to meet the 17 goal mark. What I'm saying though is his sample size is two seasons in the top flight. One season he has 17 goals in all comp- comps, and the next season he has two goals in all comps. That's our sample size. If we look at that, the season ain't over though. The season ain't <laughs> over. Ah, and let's, cool let's, let's bear in mind that um, second, half, second half of last season, that's when he scored the bulk of his goals. It's not like he was crack, uh, buying goals from the beginning of the season. I think uh, t- from the beginning to the end of the season, that's when he backed most of his goals. Like, 15 goals probably second half of the season. Fair enough. We'll see. It's yet to be seen. Budge, I'll come to you and we will go with... Hmm. We will go with Tammy Abraham. What's your thoughts of Mr. Tammy <laughs> Abraham? Hmm. Um, Tammy Abraham. Um... I am going to put him in the James Milner category because I feel that Tammy Abraham will continue to have a a steady eddy um, career. Yeah. Where he he he's a goal scorer, um, but when you look at where he's scored his goals predominantly, it's been at just a, a a step below where he's at currently at Chelsea. Yeah. Um, and I, w- when I think about the role that he plays at Chelsea and, and the role that he will continue to play, I mean, they've just gone out and spent a wad of cash um, on acquiring the services of, of a Timo Werner. Yeah. There's already rumours 
of them going out and trying to um, bring I mean. uh, bring Erling Haaland to the club. So I feel like he's always going to be a bit part player. He's never going to hold down the the position of the starting striker in that team. Yeah. Um, I think he's someone that needs a run of games to to, to find form and to um, to sort of get used to things. And I don't think he's going to be afforded that luxury. And yeah. so he's always going to struggle to break the mould and, and hold down a regular starting berth um, at Chelsea. And yeah. if I think if he was to leave Chelsea, where does he go? I don't think he gets a move to another top six yeah. club, um, you know, domestically or abroad, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've got to put him in that. Um, in that James Milner category. Um, I think he does have bags of potential. Um, and I think he will be a uh, a consistent contributor in terms of goals. Yeah. I think he's always going to be a reliable guy that can come off the bench um, and provide. But I, I just don't see much more than that from him. Um, I, I, I think part of the argument is also around what he does I, I mean I think it feels like a common theme you know what what are these players doing when they don't have the ball <laughs> off the ball what is he what is he producing what is he providing what 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 does he have to his game and yeah. I feel like it's a difficult one to pin down he doesn't really offer much if he's not scoring um yeah. and, and and even in terms of the goals that he scores I don't really feel that there's much variety to them it it yeah. feels like they're that it, it's all it's all pretty samey. Um, yeah. You know, there's not much difference to it to to, to to the kind of goals that he scores, um, and I think that's a, that's that's a limiting factor for him. So that's why I'm putting him in that category. Fair enough, Dej. No, I think I think Tammy's been hard done by. You know, last season 15 goals. This season, I believe he's got 11 already. I think yeah. not a lot of people put respect on his name, man. This is a guy that was thrown into elite football last season at Chelsea and to a large extent, he held the mantle. Yes, there was a time where it was getting overplayed and he needed a rest. Then obviously Giroud came in, but I think people are, are sleeping on Tammy and we've got overrated on this list. I think he's underrated in what he actually does. I think, again, people have an agenda against him. I don't know why, but this boy, he bags goals, man. He bags goals. Yeah, and bags. Does he have world-class potential? I don't believe so, but I think he can have a steady Premier League career. Even maybe like at a team like Leicester with Brendan Rodgers, like someone like that mm. can could get the best out of him with some good coaching. But um, yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree with um, Budge. I don't see him hitting world-class. So I'll say, yeah, James Milner, like he can have a 7 out of 10 career and score over 15 goals at a Premier League if he goes to like another club. Yeah, so James Milner. What I say is, um, he, you could argue that he's that guy already. Do you know what I mean? You could argue that he's already the consistent, the, the James Milner already. So, um, mm -hmm. my my point would be is he's not got a high trajectory, similar to how I view Saka, but he's producing for you right now. Like whether you want to start him, bring him off the bench, like he's doing what you want him to do as far as getting goals. I agree with Budge in that he's not got a lot else to his game, but bro, if he's giving you fifteen plus goals. That's a valuable member of your team. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think I agree with also Dej in that he's the target of a lot of agendas. Like yeah. people, want, people <laughs> want a lot more from him than he's willing to offer. Did I get it wrong again? I, oh, no, I, I, no, hope no. I, I hope I didn't get any other name wrong. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I think no, no. he is. There's nothing wrong with Tammy, like, and there's a lot no. right with him. And I think that people are. Overcritical of, of Tammy. Yeah. Do no, I agree. I agree with the rest of the boys. I like Tammy. I really think he's a good player. And I think a lot of footballing fans and Chelsea fans are harsh on him. You see those silly memes with him and Tim's and that. But he's, he's a good player. <laughs> He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good player. No, 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 it's true. Like, I, I, I'm a big fan of him. I, I, I like him. I think he's a good player. I think he's hard, hardly. Um, treated by certain sectors of the Chelsea fans. Listen, this guy loves the club. He's done well. He scores goals and he gives his all for the club. So you have to put him in the James Milner category. Yeah, no. Nah, and literally, not even trying to dwell on it too long. I, I'm of the same 
same answer. I think, I mean, I'm not a fan of his style of play, but if he's producing for you, you can't really go wrong with production. Do you know what I'm saying? Production exactly. is the number one, is one of the things people look at. And he produces goals. He produces goals consistently. So, yeah, man, I'm going to go with the James Milner. Cool. If I go to Dot first, mm. we're going to go with your boy, Aberi Eze. Um, it's a tough one. Uh, obviously, last season in the champ, for me, him and Ollie Watkins were the best players in the championship. And I knew when he comes prem that he's going to do a thing. He's going to, you know, set the prem alight. But with Ebbs, it's more about can he consistently deliver now for Crystal Palace? Because we've seen the flashes, that brilliant solo goal against Sheffield United. Yeah. That brilliant winner against Wolves, if I'm not mistaken, where he touched it, fainted and banged it into the bottom corner. Yeah. He's got all the ability in the world. Like This is a player that has world-class ability. But I think, again, the Premier League sample size is not enough. So for me, I'm going to put him in a question mark category. But he's yeah. got all the ability in the world and he can be whatever he wants to be. I hear that. Budge. Um, he's, a, he's a guy that I like. Um, just like Dot mentioned, in terms of his ability, the guy's got it in abundance, man. He he really has so much in in, in his bag of party tricks. And what I like about him, um, and also it, it's it's a, it's a common theme with with him and Grealish. They they share a similarity in that they're that kind of creative, um, attacking flair kind of player, but they they're not the archetypal. Um, a creative player in that you know usually you would you would you would like associate those players with being very small very slight quite slim low center of gravity now these guys are, are <laughs> built these guys are solid do you know what yeah. i mean oh. like you're not you're not moving them off the ball you're not you're, you, you see what people i mean don't the and people what don't I love about being on the pitch with a guy like that it feels a whole different way to watching it do you know yeah. what I mean? Because you're not moving them off the ball. You see them guys? You see their legs, their calves? You're not moving <laughs> them off the ball, man. You understand? <laughs> and that's what I like about um, both Grealish and, and Eze. I think um, it's, 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 a, it's like a, um, a, a new like, type of attacking midfield player. Um, and I think with both of them, again, another similarity is that... The, within their skill set, they've got so much different things that they can do. You can use them in so many different ways. Like a Bereze can play out wide. He can play just behind the striker. He can, I think he could, he could even potentially play in a midfield free, you yeah. know, he, mm -hmm. he's, he's got yeah. the ability to do all of it. Um, but I think I, I definitely side with, with dot there in terms of he's got to be in a question mark category because one, the sample size is small. Um, and, Two, I, I'm I'm not sure if he he's really going to be able to realize his potential at Palace. Yes. Are they going to play the system that gets the best out of him consistently? You know, yeah. if are you know are are, are they going to have to change their formation and their style of play when the chips are down, for example, and they're up against it? Um, and and ultimately that that that's why he's got to be in that category because it's like you know. W will it happen? Will it not happen? Is he going to get a move to a to a to a um, a bigger club that is going to play the kind of style of football that that will get the best out of him? We have to wait and see. Just to quickly give Matthew some understand you on that, I, I like the comparison between him and Grealish, and I agree with you in that they're versatile. But I think that actually is a detriment, not to them, but in terms of like their development, because I believe put him at number ten, him Grealish Foden. Them man there, just bang, let, give them a free roll and just say, guys, I feel like, because obviously we see a lot of copycat approaches in terms of you want to have the traditional um, wide men and then have a free in midfield or whatever. I feel like those are the kind of guys you just need to let go. But um, a lot of his development is also dependent on where he goes, you know, what manager he plays under. I was looking at it like, because, listen, this guy is the best player I've ever been on a pitch with. Do you know what I mean? So I, I, I hold him in a high, high, high regard. But I think a lot of the way things pan out will depend on, as I said, where he goes, what manager he plays under, if he actually 
finds the right position. Because we see a guy like Paul Pogba, we haven't seen the best of him because he hasn't. We don't know where to play him. Do you get what I mean? But um, oh, I would have loved him at United. You know, we we signed Daniel James from the Championship. If we signed a guy like him, I would have loved to see him develop with the young guys that we have. But in terms of his, like where I regard him, I agree with you guys. Question mark. But if I'm being honest, I believe in the right scenario, he's got world class potential. No, definitely, he's got world class moments in him. And like he came onto our podcast, obviously we had a vibe with him and I was more like looking at his psychology, like he's so self-aware. I need to improve on the way I receive the ball. This is what yeah. I need to improve. He was very analytical and that shows me that he's studying, like he was preparing yes. for the Premier League. And from what we've seen so far, yeah, in games, he's shown that he's got world-class potential, but there's been those odd other games like against Leeds where he's ineffective and... He needs to be making sure he's providing more than just the goals. But as I said, I don't want to be too harsh. It's his first mm. season in the Premier League. And if you were sort of marrying him up with a manager to work with, it wouldn't be Roy Hodgson. So, exactly. I, I and he wouldn't be playing at Alice. That's it. So I mm. think the plan for, for Ebbs is probably to stay at Palace for another season, post up some numbers, then maybe move to a top six, seven club, then maybe yeah. can unlock his potential. But for now, I can't say he's got James Milner seven, eight, because I see him. I rate him very, very highly. <laughs> he can ball. Is he overrated? I'd love no. to see him at Leicester. But <laughs> Matt, Madison, does he get, does he displace Madison? That's the only thing. I think you'll find um, a way around that. And the backing, like where Ebbs has come from in terms of, you know, that street footballer, he was very big on that when he came into our podcast saying, yeah, he was released. Some managers didn't get him. So his thing is going to be about the managers that he's paired up with throughout his career yeah. and whether they can give him that responsibility and say, you know what, do your thing. You ain't got to worry about this and that because he's a player from speaking to him that he needs to feel he's got the trust of the manager. And that's what he had yeah. with Mark Warburton, Ian Holloway, you know, mm. at, at QPR when he was on loan at Wickham. So hopefully yeah. he gets that um, for Crystal Palace because I don't think Will Hodgson will be there next season. I and I think the, the more you put on his plate, the more he'll rise to the occasion. Do you know what I mean? So it's just about, does he, as you said, does he get paired up with a manager that sees him as a potentially world-class player? No, 100%. 100%. Moving forward, then we'll go next to Emil Smith-Rowe. Darren, we'll go to you first. What do you think about ESR? Small sample size, probably put him in the question mark category. I don't want to say he's overrated, you know, even though Arsenal fans have been hyping him up a little bit. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to be harsh on the lad, but I like the look of him, man. He's definitely given them what they needed. It, again, it's crazy that they stumbled across it. He should have been in the plans at the start of the season. Do you know what I mean? Because he was clearly something that they needed. Um, I like the look of him. I don't think he's got like world class potential, but I probably say. James Milner, but then again, listen, if, if he goes on as a um, fantastic second half of the season, he, he could be on pace to be world class. But I put him in the question mark category for now. Mm, that's an interesting take. Let me have a let me have a thing. Someone else. All right, then Dej. Um, this one is it's a very, very interesting case, man. I'm not gonna lie. Uh last season he was on loan at Huddersfield. Um, yeah. I've spoken to his agent a few times and, you know, they were talking about his loan spell. He showed some good performances and they've got big stocks in him, like massive, massive stocks. They think he can go to the top. I know in and amongst Arsenal, he was one of the names that, yeah, give him a chance. He can he can do a thing. I know he went yeah. to Germany as well, had a loan spell. But the thing is, what I want to know is, is he the flavour of the month or does he have that staying power <laughs> exactly. at the top? Exactly. <laughs> and, and I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is just, you know, a run of form. I think there's massive, massive question marks. This is like, this is someone that question marks is made for. But boy, this guy's had a massive, massive improvement. You know, Arsenal, what they needed is energy, attacking verb, that fearlessness, you know, yes. to attack yeah. and not play without the shackles. Like, you know, leave my mark on the team. I'm coming into this team to leave my imprint. You know, I don't care about anyone else. And that's what he's done. But is this, does this have longevity? Or is this just a <laughs> moment? I don't know. So I'm going to say no. this question marks. 
And as funny as that is, as funny as funny as that is, bro, I'm even gonna be a bit more harsh. He's overrated, in my opinion. I think <laughs> as of this as of this moment, no, and Bud, you're, you're, Bud, you're gonna hate me for this, but if I'm being I'm honest, mean. when I what when I look yes, when I look at ESR, do I think he is the reason why Arsenal suddenly had this upturn in form before? Obviously, now it's back to usual Arsenal, but the upturn in form, do I think he's the reason behind it? No, I don't think so. I think it's there's something in football what I call football naivety when you come into the side and there's literally nothing going on but you just play your game and it just looks good because the team is now being successful and everything is working. It's it's, it's that youthful exuberance that a player has. And I think he's got that. I think he's got youthful exuberance. He's showing flashes, got neat touches here and there. But do I think necessarily that there's I don't know it's, it's unfair when I'm deep in it thinking about it it's unfair in it but I just think he's overrated because of what I'm hearing and that's what I'm mm. basing it off of what I'm hearing of him they're saying mm. he's this they're saying he's that do I think he's any I think if I'm looking at the guys that we're talking about in terms of all the attacking players on this list the guys we collected together I think he's last so I think to be saying he's the Next best thing since sliced bread. I think he's overrated, man. Overrated for me. Well, small sample size as well, yeah, isn't it? That's why we say he's small sample size, of yeah. course. Yeah. I think I think the right questions are certainly being asked, though. I, I I do have to agree certainly with a lot that um Dej mentioned there in terms of you know th th those month. big those big questions. Is it is it the the flavor of the month? Does he have this the stay in power? Because everyone knows Arsenal were crying out for creativity a blind man could have told you that arsenal <laughs> needed <laughs> someone who could 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 move the ball from deep midfield to high midfield and, and connect the um midfield and, and attack right any anyone um could have told you that and arteta managed to stumble across it due to injuries and a few other uh things and 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 fair play to emil smith row when the chance came he took it with both hands you know he grabbed the ball by the horn so you've got to, you've got to say fair play to him in in that regard um what i like about him in particular is the fact that he he really um wants to move the ball forward and 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 quickly i like i, I draw some comparisons to with him and harvey barnes in how direct they are with their running he he off the ball he really tries to hurt teams with in, in terms of creating a, 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 the, the angle for the one-two or making that run in behind to draw a defender away. Yeah. And the way that he moves the ball, it, it's always with, with as minimal touches as possible. And I think at times in the midfield for Arsenal, things can be very pedestrian. I, I, like you, you, you use someone like Granit Xhaka as an example. One of the issues that he has is that he holds onto the ball for, for, for so long certain opportunities then are missed because you know the the the, the, the space is closed up and Emil Smith Rowe is really good at um moving the ball really quickly and he's got a really good partnership in combination with um Bakayo Saka and Lacazette that's developed because of the fact that he moves the ball so quickly. I think that the, the big question mark that I have against Emil Smith Rowe at the moment is that he's he's played really really well and done really well when we've played against teams that have a high line and there's space in behind for him to run into but not necessarily so well when he's playing against a team that sit deep yeah. and there's been a few times where against those kind of defenses he's 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 made the wrong decision so i think it, for me for him to go to that next level it, it, it it's it, the improvement in, in his decision making when he's playing against teams that are playing a, uh, in a low block you know, can can he take that step um, forward and 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 be influential in those kind of games remains yeah. to be seen. And for that reason, I've got to agree with um, with, with with you guys in terms of that question mark category um, and putting him in there. Family dot. Yeah, massive question mark for me. I'm not going <laughs> to sit here and pretend because when I think about it, if Arsenal want to get back into the top four, I don't think he's the player that needs to be starting in number 10 yeah. every single game. And for that reason, I have to put a question mark on his head because yeah. does he get into any other of the top six clubs? I'm not sure. I'm not sure he starts for Leicester. So, 
Yeah, it's a question mark for me. I think he's a good player, but I don't think he's at that level of some of the other youngsters. Mm. Cool. Could you could cool. just be a slow burner, you know? Oof, yet to be seen, man. Yet to be seen. Let's go to Curtis Jones. Curtis Jones of Liverpool. I'll kick that Let's off. I think, yeah, I'm going to go with a question mark. Um, a lot of talent, plays football the right way. Obviously, I'm a Liverpool fan. I've watched him very closely. He's got all the ability, but he just needs to brush him up on that final piece of final third play and having that composure to pick the right decisions at the right time. Um, I think he's going to have a good career. I don't know whether he's going to be the solution for Liverpool long term. Yeah. Um, I speak to some Liverpool fans and they say, listen, this player is going to be the future captain, whereas I stand on the other side of things that I'm not sure if he's going to make it at Liverpool. So he's yeah. definitely highly rated and he has all the confidence and arrogance to be a top player. But for now, we have to put a question mark next to him. Yeah, Jim, I'm interested to see what you think. Oh, this one, um, I'm kind of undecided. I'm not going to lie. Um, he's come into the team. He's been afforded an opportunity by the fact of the injuries that Liverpool have had. He's yeah. come in. He's made his imprint. The first thing I look for in his, is, as a youngster is, are you going to make your mark? Or are you just mm -hmm. going to play shy and just pass the ball on? Yeah. Are you going to do a bit? And he does a bit. You can see his personality <laughs> on the pitch, the skills, the drag backs. He plays with flair. But yeah, like... Aesthetically, it's pleasing, but you mm. need to start posting results, assists, key passes. And, yeah. and that's the bit where he lacks, in my opinion. I remember a game against Fulham. I thought he was going to score. He missed. Mm. And those are like the moments, like when you think of like a full folded who I, yeah. uh, I'm going to say, I think he's at, you know, the top of the tree when it comes to this debate about, yeah. you know, um, that kind of stuff. And I want to start seeing that. Start yeah. deciding games. Start. I know against West Ham he came on and we scored the goals and we won the game, but I want him to be no. more involved in that. You know, I want him to see him have more deciding moments. So I think if I was going to judge his career, it would probably be <sighs> James Milner. I think he can have a steady career. I think he can have a steady career. Is he world-class potential? Maybe, maybe so. So probably the correct thing to do is a question mark. But I think... Um, James Milner, because I think once Liverpool get all their injuries healed and once they get to play how they want to play, I think opportunities will be limited for him. Mm -hmm. And longer term, he might have to yeah. move aboard to get opportunities. Because Liverpool, yeah. <laughs> look at the central midfield, Henderson, Thiago, Fabinho, Wijnaldi might leave. You've got a lot of talent that you're competing with. So for now, I'm going to say James Milner, because I think once cool. he leaves Liverpool, there'll be a lot of Premier League takers. Darren. Yeah, I'm going to go a question mark with him, man. Um, small sample size, haven't seen much. But from what I have seen, I like the look of him. Um, comfortable on the ball. And what I give him credit for is he's in a winning team. Do you know what I mean? It's hard to be the guy that we have world-class potential when you're playing for a team like Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? They're winning things. They're competing at the highest level. It's hard to, you know, stand out when you're playing amongst such great players. But, um, yeah, I like, from what, I like what I've seen from him so far, but... For me, it's still inconclusive. Yeah. Butch? Um, I'm going to put him in the James Milner category. I, I, like, I like him because I feel like in terms of his skill set, he's the only player at Liverpool that has that skill set. Um, I like what I see on the ball. At the moment, of course, it, it is up for debate. Is it style? Is it substance? We have to wait and see. Um, but I do, I do like the aesthetic of the player. Definitely. Um, the thing about it is, if Wijnaldum was to leave, I think, yeah, I agree. You know, like, is he gonna is he gonna be able to step and come to the fore and be like, but basically prove to Jurgen Klopp that he doesn't need to go out into the market and find another midfielder and that he's gonna be that guy. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I kind of feel like if Wijnaldum does leave, then Liverpool are still going to go out yeah. and get another uh, midfielder to replace him. And in that case, that obviously is going to limit his time. Of course, uh, someone mentioned before about the fact that, that there are a lot of injuries being nursed at the moment. So, of course, he's going to have more opportunities. But when the, the squad is, 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 is all fi uh, firing on all cylinders and everyone's fit, his playing time is going to be limited. So, 
Um, I think if if that is the case, and and um, either Wijnaldum stays or he goes and, and Liverpool re- replace him, yeah. um, he's he's always just going to be a guy that will be part of the squad and that can come in and do a job when he's called upon. Um, but but I don't know if he's really gonna n- nail n- nail down a place in the starting eleven in in, in Klopp's uh, future plans. Yeah, no, short and sweet, Curtis Jones for me is inconclusive is the word, man. It's the right word. I just don't know. I don't know whether he's a goal scorer midfielder. He's a midfielder who sits back. I don't know if he wants to conduct play. I don't, I, I don't know what type of midfielder, what his player profile is, basically. Mm. Um, in, in and FM, it might not even be in Liverpool. That's the, that's the interesting that, thing. Exactly. In FM, I know how to use him, but I don't, in real life, <laughs> I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. So... I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't, no, know. I I don't know. He's a nice player. He's a nice. No, he nice is. He player. is <laughs> nice on the ball. Yeah, Very but that's nice. what I'm saying. Mean. Budge. That was the key thing you said. Is it style or is it <laughs> exactly? That, that, that's, that's, the, that's the perfect. perfect. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. But let's move on to getting to the end of the list now. Let's move on to who's interested. Can I, let's can move I, on. Can I, can I pick? Yeah, go on, go on, go on. I'll kick this one off. I'm gonna go with Neto. Hey, that's what I was actually going to do yeah. there as well. I was ready. I'm going to keep this very simple. I think this for me was the easiest decision out of all the names that we've had yeah. Yeah. previously. And I'm going to put him in the world class potential because. I just haven't seen a player like this before. Like, just gets the ball and he just runs at you. And you can't stop him. He's <laughs> just a monster. Like, honestly, I think every single club in the top six need to be going in for this player Looking in the summer. Up. Because he is yeah. going to be world class. Mm. Nah. Short and sweet, man. Short what what sweet. do you think? Short and sweet. I agree. Hundred. The guy's 20 as well. He's a joke. <laughs> he's, he's actually a joke. Every time... You know, and, and obviously... I. Like speaking from from the position of an Arsenal fan, what he's done against my team, how okay. he's run Bellerin ragged, like what I've seen this guy do on a pitch. Nah, honestly, man. When, when I when I realized his age, I thought this guy. Like, if this is what he's doing now, where is he going to be in, in in three years' time? Like, okay. in terms of how integral he is to that Wolves team, I, I think I've got to agree with Dot in terms of. If if I'm a top six team, hundred percent, I'm 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 testing Wolves' reser- uh, resolve um, to hold on to him because I think he he's got all the talent in the world. He's got all the potential to really really go and 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 you know hit the hit those dizzy and heights, man. Quick quick tangent. Do you man think he's got a higher ceiling than Jota? Because I, I feel like they could have got more peace for for Jota. But how do you man feel about him versus Jota? Ooh. Oh, it's a tough Ooh. one. That That's is a, a tough one. Yeah, it's a difficult, difficult question. Higher ceiling. I think obviously due to his age, you'll probably have to say so. Like doing <laughs> what he's doing at the age of 20. How old's Hotter? What, 23? 23? Yeah, 24. 23. 24. Yeah. So the age yeah, isn't so, even that big. Yeah, it's but not... that's three years of development, man. Yeah, what he's doing enough, now. Enough, like, when he first came to my attention, I remember last season against Liverpool, I think we yeah, scored. He scored. scored off, and it was offside. Man. Yeah, like... I was like, who's this guy? Like, the energy, the direction. <laughs> He's a happy yeah. man. He, he gives you hell. Like, I used to play fullback and playing up against him, you just know, oh, this guy's a pest. Hey, He's going to get the ball. Like, He's going to yeah. run at me. I'm yep. going to be on the back four. It's just relentless for 90 minutes. So, being that young, leaving the imprint that he's doing at Wolves, you have to say that this is a guy that's probably going to end up at Real Madrid, you know? Like, he, he's got that ability from what I see so far. So, I would agree, man. World-class potential for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, I'm with you yeah. guys. Uh, oh, sorry, Doc. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, I just... When I, I'm trying to, like... When I see players, I try to marry up their game versus previous players. And with him, there's no one like him. That he just gets the ball in back. He yeah, yeah, he just dashes at it. My man would do two touches through the middle of two men and he's gone. And yeah, like, literally. Man. And he's only 20. I think what stands out to me about him is he's fearless. And yeah, that man. is what, that, that's, that's the common thread we see between guys at the elite level. Like the confidence never wavers. That they're, they're they're confident that they they can do anything on the football pitch. Nothing is outside their wheelhouse, and to have that confidence at twenty years old, to basically Jimenez has gone down. He's stepping up to be the main man. Like Wolves have got to be careful. Someone's gonna come. I can't believe they only got thirty five mil for Jota. By the way, just on a tangent. Like, listen, th- this guy, this guy's gonna be worth 
Big bread, real soon. Big bread. It's mad though. Obviously, just quick thing. When Liverpool paid that, some Liverpool fans are thinking that's too much for Hotter. We wanted this yeah. way with Sar, but obviously the efficiency yeah, and what Hotter's brought to the team, man, he, he's actually really it's just so yeah, cold, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, you remember a bargain for Jota? Oh, bar- yeah, that's yeah, what I was bargain and a half. Bargain yeah. bucket. Is that your star? No, literally, yeah, yeah. and it's it's, it's funny because I even said, bro. When when Liverpool remember when Liverpool Darren when Liverpool signed Jota and Santiago because I think it was like a week apart. Yep. Yeah, a day, Friday, a day apart. A day apart. Friday, said, Friday, we said Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, no, nah, literally, apart. we said we yeah, said game changer. Rap. Yeah, he rap. <laughs> said done. He said it's all done. And bro, that's how you know these guys are ballers. Um, let's go to one who I'm not really sure what other people's opinions are. Um, Ben White. I mean, he was on loan at Leeds last season. It was quality, technical, very very good player. Brighton said, "No way, are we letting you have him?" And obviously, he's he's established himself in the in the back three. So, what do we think of Ben White? This quick one's two interesting. Cents for me. Oh, go on. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go quick. My thing with him is the bar for centre backs right now is low. Like the, the standard of centre backs right now, even on the world level, is low. Like I mean, to be a world class centre back, it doesn't take a lot in today's in today's day and age. Genuinely, like if you can kick ball. And you're decent at one of Listen, Harry Maguire is the most expensive centre back in, in world football, and he's the captain of my football club. Like, pfft, he's nowhere near world class. So, listen, Ben White, I feel like he's got world class potential. Listen, the bar is low. He's comfortable on the ball. I love what I've seen from him on the ball. Um, yeah, listen, I, I, I like the look of him a lot. I think the sample size is small. Love what he did at Leeds last season. But, um, yeah, man, I think, listen, it doesn't take much to be a world-class centre-back. And I think he's on. He's he's got the opportunity to do so. Obviously, he needs a bigger move at a bigger club. I'm seeing reports that clubs are, bigger clubs are, are looking at him. But um, I believe he can be a number one, number two guy at one of the biggest clubs in the league. Right. No, that's a good take because it's interesting. I went to watch um, Crystal Palace versus Brighton early on in the season and I sort of had my binoculars out. I was looking at Ben White. That day he played in a midfield um, role, you know, centrally with Basuma and that. And he's decent. He's good. Good mm. range of passing. Um, bitey and chunky in the challenge. He's competitive. <laughs> he's like technical. Yeah. He's very competitive. And I just think, where does he fit in this list? Uh, world-class potential. I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen that. <laughs> I don't look and think, wow, he can be world-class. But yeah, but then, what about with the low That's bar? That's out the fact that yeah, the, the, low yeah, the standard is low, low right bar. now. <laughs> the standard is low right now. So you think he can potentially go to like um, uh, a Liverpool, a City, because those are like the world-class teams. I see him as a John Stones type guy. Like, John yeah. Stones is all- do you get what I'm saying? John Stones, yeah. if he keeps playing the way he's playing right now, he's England's best centre back, and that's based on three months of good form. That bar point is a good angle, but for me, when I look at him, I think it's not, it's not a wow thing. It's not a wow thing. Yeah, like yeah, it, either we can border, we can border on the overrated because some of the fees that yes. have been reckoned with that's this it. guy, 40 million, 50 million pounds. Yeah, I don't it. personally see it. I don't I don't see it in my opinion, but I think he can have a steady career. So I'm going in between James Milner and overrated. And nice. because obviously Dan thinks he can play at, you know, that sort of level, I'm gonna have to say he's overrated. Because I, yeah. I watched him, I had my binoculars out, he's good. The fact that he's even banging centre mid, I think that that's 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 a good sign. Like that's for me. If I'm watching that, that's less about how he's performing, but the fact that the manager has confidence to even play him there. How many centre backs can you say that about? Yeah, he's comfortable on the ball and he can. But I think his best position is centre back, and obviously he performed well in the Championship for Leeds, who are a yeah. dominant team, well yeah. coached, had the best coach in the league. So we have to marry that up in the Premier League. He's caught the eye once or twice. But there's been times where I've seen him, you know, sort of disorganised and rag- discombobulated. Yeah, you know. yeah. And so, I, hear so, you. So, I think and Rashford. Of... I think Rashford done a chop yeah, on him. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Was, obviously, that doesn't that say lovely. much. That doesn't yeah. really say much, obviously. But from what I've seen, in terms of people, are saying, okay, this guy, 40, 50 million pound. Do I see it? No. But again, is that his fault? No. So I'll say James Milner. He can. Have yeah, yeah, yeah. No, hundred percent. And the reason why I wanted to even give my two pence on him is because I like him. 
I think mm. he's a he's in the James Milner category. And the reason why I say that is just to keep it short and sweet, I think his ceiling is Gary Cahill. I think he can get that big move, be the second centre back at a big team, and he'll be okay. Like he'll be calm, he'll get his silverware, do his job, be a good servant for the club. But he doesn't, he's not necessarily, oh wow, like this guy is yeah. unbelievable. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. How many centre backs do we say wow about in the world right now? That's but my that's, point. What's the no, difference between world class and James Milner at the centre back position? I know, but then that's why we're gonna get into it. The difference between Ruben Diaz, in my opinion, and Ben White mm. and what we've seen mm. is clear. And that yeah. is what the bar Obviously. is. And Obviously. that's what the level yeah. is, in my opinion. But and you can argue Ruben Diaz is world-class right now, though. That's my point. He's not potential. He's world-class yeah. right now, you could argue. Okay. Fair, no, that's fair enough. But if you look at centre-backs, like, if we look at the centre-backs, do you think necessary, especially when he's playing in the back three for Brighton, who are in 16th position, do you think he has world-class potential? That's what I say. At the end of the day, it depends on where he goes. Because I, I, I believe he'll bag a move and it just depends on how well he thrives once he goes to a bigger club. But Will you be happy with Ben White as your centre second? Listen, Harry Maguire is my captain and at the back of my club right now. Give me Ben White over Harry Maguire. Oh, wow. Fair enough. Harry Maguire is meant to be a ball-playing centre-back. Harry Maguire is meant to be a ball-playing centre-back. My man's banging centre-mid. You think you could put Harry Maguire at centre-mid? <laughs> but this is the issue, Darren. This is the issue because <laughs> when we talk about Ben White... And I think the, the comparison with John Stones is perfect. We When we consider him, it's more about his ball-playing ability rather than his ability as a defender. Exactly. Like, yeah. you know, like that that is ultimately the issue. Of course, it's great that he is versatile enough to be able to play in, um, in, in midfield. But ultimately, he's a centre-half. And what he needs to be best at is defending. And yeah. that's where there are still a number of question marks against his name. In you know, we know he can spray a pass. We know he can he he, he can distribute. But when it comes to the nitty gritty, when it comes down to the dirty work, is he able to produce? And I think John Stones again. The reason why that example is perfect is you alluded to the fact that he's been playing well and been in great form for the past few months, which is leading to calls of him you know being one of the best if not the best um, English centre-half at, at, at present. But we haven't highlighted the fact to that a huge reason why he's played so well is because he's got a guy who knows how to defend next to him. Ruben Diaz is a proper defender. <laughs> you understand? And and so because, he, because he's a proper real defender, it makes him look better as yeah. well. Yeah? yeah, and yeah. we have to we have to highlight we have to highlight that fact as well. So Ben White, great ability, you know how how well he can defend. We have to wait and see. I think he will have a steady career, uh, and and how high he ranks in that steady career depends largely on his partner. All right, then let's let's go let's go to Ruben Diaz. Then where's Ruben Diaz? Boy, well, Clark, you know what? It's it's, it's generational. Obviously, the sample size, obviously, first season in the Premier League, he's playing in a Man City team that are doing well, but you can also attribute Man City's rising form to him. Yeah. But I think when you look at it in the perspective that this is his first season in the Premier League, Manchester yeah. City are keeping clean sheets in every single game they're playing at the moment. Yep. And he's only 23. He can yeah. be the next great centre-back in world football. Yep. Because he can be at the top for the next seven, eight, nine, ten years. So, so. with that reasoning, we, we're going to have to put him into that generational talent, but at yeah. the very low end of it. Yeah. But that's only because we've seen a small sample size. You know what I mean? Another year mm. in the league, you could say he is steadily up there with Van Dijk as the, the, some of the best centre in the league and in, on the I, planet. I, I think that's a bit, uh, a bit far <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I don't be a gap between him and Van Dijk. Or who else is in that Van Dijk category? That's no, no, point. I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. But this is what we said about Laporte last season and all of a sudden no one speaks about Laporte. About so Laporte. I think yes. we, no, but we shouldn't be in a rush to say, listen, yeah, this is right, the next right, best right, thing right. since Van Dijk because Van Dijk, in my opinion, is the greatest centre-back to play in the Premier League. 
Whoa, huh? whoa, yeah, to, whoa, be honest, whoa, to be honest, to be honest with me, whoa, whoa. <laughs> to be honest with me, I don't like giving out praise just easily and saying, <laughs> yes, he's had 12 clean sheets in 20 games. So I'm gonna have to say the question marks are still out. How good is he? <laughs> now, how good is it? Is it between world class or generational? I don't mm. think like is this That's... form sustainable? Like mm. That's we, saw the mistake against, we saw the mistake against yeah, Liverpool. Yeah, like, so I don't want to... Obviously, City are going to win the league this season. That's clear. He's been a key reason for the upturn in form. Pep's record signing centre-backs was a bit patchy. You know, people are mentioning Chigrinsky, all of these other people. <laughs> 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 he, no, no, no. Honestly, I remember Monday night. <laughs> Monday night hey, that, that guy from Shakhtar the, Sh- yeah. the next day, he was supposed to be a baller. He, he was. was supposed to be That's a baller. Okay. So on FN, he was, was mad, by the way. Yeah, yeah, crazy guy, crazy guy. So he had a lot of hey, question yeah, marks yeah. coming into a situation where people are sort of saying, you know what, the pressure's on you. Come and be the next Vincent company. And yeah. that's the pressure he's had to contend with. And he's stepped up to the plate with minimal fuss. You know, he's big, lean, powerful. <laughs> he's got that gait of like a top <laughs> athlete, top center. Trojan, bro. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> I think he's got world-class potential. Is it generational? I think it's too early to say. He looks like he can be world-class. So I'm going to say question mark because how good right. can he be? How good can he be? He's 23. Centre-backs notoriously mature later on. So, like, if he's doing this at 23 and he's consistent for four years, you can say this guy's a, a generational yeah, defender. No, you're right, he's dude. leaving a mad imprint. So mm. for that reason, I'm going to say question mark. Yeah, fair enough. Butch. Yeah. Yeah, well, whoever, yeah. I don't know, man. It's for me. It's a toss up between generational and and world class potential. Um, because I just think this guy has all the ingredients, man. And listening to, um, in fact, not listening, uh, reading um an an interview that he did recently when he was speaking about the art of defending and the fact that for him. The only thing he cares about is keeping a clean sheet. Like he's obsessed with it. So for me, that's all the right signs in terms of mentality and, and, and mindset of a defender. The fact that he doesn't want to give uh, teams any, any confidence. He doesn't want to give uh, them the opportunity to shoot at his goal. Like, and he's willing to put his body on the line to ensure that that doesn't happen. And for me, I, 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 just off air when we were talking about him before we, before we started recording... And we were talking about his age. I I had no idea he was that young. Yeah, I thought this guy, he, the, the way he plays, his temperament, the way he he, he carries himself, is a guy who's far more mature and, and and experienced in terms of in terms of years. And I think, you know, you know, touch wood, he can stay fit and and continue to 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 play. I think we've got a real, real, genuine generational talent on our hands in terms of uh, you know the defenders, most definitely. Yeah, I'd quickly say, just to add what I said prior, generational for me again, man, um, goes back to the fact that the bar is low right now. So I say, mm. man coming to the Premier League and he's he's been the best centre-back this season in his debut season at the age of 23. Man City that, I don't remember the lot, Pep has never had a defence this good. And he's the guy that's come in and changed that. Um, I, I guess in the Premier League, uh, Pep has never had a defence this good and he changed that. But... Um, yeah, man, as you were saying, the, the dying intent to keep a clean sheet, again, that's a dying breed. We don't see that in a lot of centre-backs in today's that's game. That's Italian mentality, man. Yeah. Yeah. All of them, man. Yeah. Them, line, them, bro. Them, man, them man aren't about no more. Them man are, them man are moving extinct. They're, they're endangered. And um, to see a guy like that come to the Premier League, I, I love it, man. And listen, generational, generational. I think the biggest Good compliment generation. that I can pay him was during the Liverpool game. I think there was a free kick on the edge of the box and he literally just grabbed the player on the floor. You get there. And I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There. And I love that. I love that. No, nah, 100%. I think based on what everyone said, did we say generational then? I say on question mark thing. because is it between world class and generational? Generation. I don't know. <laughs> I you know 12 clean sheets in 20 games. It's quality, but again, it's that staying power. Does he have yeah, it over yeah. the course of a career? We don't know, you know. I think so. Dot, you said generational. You know what? Dej, you know what? Dej just changed my mind. I'm gonna put him in the world class potentially. World class potential. Yeah. Butch, you said generational. Yeah, I said generational. Darren, you said yeah. generational, innit? Yeah. Um, I would put him ooh, 
boy. Quick question then, just yes or no. Based on what you saw, what Van Dijk do you did, would you put Van Dijk as a generational talent? Van Dijk is a ge- generational player. Player, yeah. cool. But at the same time, Van Dijk was in his prime when he came. Do you know what I'm saying? That's the difference. Yeah, but it's mad yeah. because when even when Van Dijk was at Southampton, I said, listen, this is the best centre-back in the Premier League. Just just needs to Fair play enough. for a bigger team. Fair enough. Mm. I, I'll put him generational talent then, but at the low end, very low end of... Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I'll put him there. I'll put him there. Oh, we got our first entry. We got our first <laughs> entry. I didn't in think... The, was, listen, listen, being a generational centre-back, that's tough to do. So I'm saying maybe in today's climate it's a bit easier, but not how many centre backs do we really say? Oh, he's generational. Yeah. Mm. No, that's fair enough. All mm. right, moving on. Then we're getting to the final guys. Tariq Lamptey. He's someone I'm always intrigued on people's opinions on. So Lamptey, what do we think? Because look, there's someone who said to me, if he leaves Brighton and doesn't play in a wing back role again, he's not going to be the player he 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 should be. And I, I, look, I thought about it and I said, do you know what? That's a fair point. Like. Can mm. he be a quality fullback? Look mm. at Matt Doh- look at Matt Doh- Doherty, someone who's in his prime. <laughs> he, he, he's terrible. He's terrible right now. Um, but he, when he played for Wolves, balling out. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we don't know. We don't know. So what but they're yeah. saying he's a system player, basically. Yeah, system player. Yeah, that's what that's what I've heard, isn't it? That's listen, what I've heard. Mm. Listen, I'm convinced. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be one of, yeah. This is gonna be someone that's gonna be one of the best right backs in the world. Like Mad. it's just as simple as that. Mad. I was you know asking a question in my group chat, and I was like, listen, there's only like five um, fullbacks in the Premier League that can actually dominate a game, and it's Trent Alexander Arnold, Tariq Lamptey, um, Cancelo, And maybe one more. I can't remember. I can't remember who I said. Yeah. It, might, it may have even been Ben Chilwell. I can't remember. I don't think it was Ben Chilwell. But, for example, mm-hmm. say we use Ben Chilwell. And I think for him to do that at a team like Brighton, yeah. this guy's proper stuff, man. And there was interest <laughs> in him from Bayern Munich. And he's only been at Brighton for a year. And that was genuine, strong interest. I think Dej can probably say more about that. But... This is a player that every single club in the top six need to be looking at. And I think Arsenal should be all over this one in the summer. Yeah. Chelsea are shooting themselves in the foot right now that um, they let him go, man. I think you, no, you definitely... have to look at the circumstances. Of course, we didn't want to let him go. But the question was... Who How much you get for him? You know, chicken, much? Chains, chicken chains. Chicken chains. He was in the last year of his deal. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. But even in the cameos that he showed for you guys, he showed what he's about, man. Me, I love this kid. I, I as much as I like Aaron Wambasaka, I look at him and think, like, damn, like hmm. chicken change. Uh, Brighton got him for. Imagine having a guy like Tariq Lamptey at right back for us. Boy, that right hand side would look a lot better than it is. It's like a void right now. But um, yeah, man, listen, that them man getting the ball as much as they can, and that says a lot about him. The fact that um, he can get things done, and Brighton play good football. Do you know what I mean? It says a lot about him that dead. He's the guy that um, they're trying to feed the ball to. So, I mean, it's not as though they're looking for an outlet. They can play football, but yet they're still trying to get the ball to him. Um, he makes things happen. Um, he, he not a lot of experience, and he's still able to dominate games. Um, I'm just a big fan of Tariq Lamptey, man. And the next club that he goes to, I see him being a big player for that club. Huge. Yeah. So oh yeah. By the way, the big, sorry, big, big, sorry. sorry. Big Sorry, Dave, I was just going to say, by the way, the player that I forgot, you know, when I was talking about the wing backs, it was Robertson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the player that, that slipped my mind, oh. Robertson as well. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Dej. Just to clarify, yeah, so world class potential for Lamptey for me, sir. Yeah, so like in terms of Lamptey, I remember him bursting onto the scene. I think it was Arsenal, Chelsea. Then, yeah, he you know, came on. Playing and the right, game, yeah, man. and it's like, what? Yep. This guy, who is this guy? You know, pint sized, energetic, <laughs> bursting up and down, tenacious. Like he dominates games. I think it was a game mm. against Newcastle where he won a pen. He was just man of the match yeah. everywhere, you know. And <laughs> like this boy, I think he's going to the top and he's got a good team around him. Obviously, I speak to his team and stuff, and they've got a carefully planned program with him of how they want to move him on. Obviously, there yeah. was interest from yeah. Bayern Munich, Atletico, all these teams threw their hat into the ring because they know this boy is the truth, he's the real deal. And Next. I think it was the correct decision for him to stay at Brighton, develop on a Graham Potter, 
You know, he's doing a good job so far. So even if he has to stay there for another season, then make that clever move where he can be yeah. a regular starter for a big team. So I think this boy is heading to the top and generational might be a stretch, but I think he's got world-class potential. I think he can be... He, him and Trent can have a battle for that right-back position for, for England. And I think he made it clear that he wants to play for England. So I can see those two dominating. And that says a lot because 12, 18 months ago, the talk was about Reese James. And obviously, yeah. Lamptey's had to leave Chelsea. And I would say he's ahead of James in that pecking order, you know? So yep, right. I think sometimes you have to take the long way home and it seems he's doing this. So in the long term, he's going to benefit. So I, I think world-class potential for Tariq Lamptey. Interesting then. Boy. Mm. And then Budge. I'm going to keep it short and simple. Just like Dot, I'm completely sold. Yes, I've seen man. this guy going forward and I've seen him defending. And he's equally adept at both. Yeah. Honestly, Arsenal should move heaven and earth to sign this guy. Like, of course, there are other pressing areas that they need to address. But I think replacing Bellerin is in that um, group of, <laughs> of, of issues that need to be addressed. <laughs> you know? Um, and you like he's got everything that you need in 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 your in your fullback. Um, so I, I honestly would would literally give Brighton a blank check. What do you want for him? <laughs> and that's it. And so my my classification is world class potential, hundred percent. The sad thing about the blank check thing is Arsenal ain't about that life, man. And if I'm being honest. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if you man have got the bread to go get him because it's going to be no, a bit. It's, it's a Klarna thing, man. It's a Klarna thing. <laughs> Klarna thing over the next few years, man. Def definitely an instalments thing, but um, yeah, 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 definitely. Let's go to then Reese James, his um the guy who Chelsea believed to have more stock in. That's why Lamptey obviously got um sold. Um, Reese James is the heir apparent to Aspilicueta at the right back position. Um, what do we think about Reese James and his talent? This one's a tricky one. Um, I've kept major tracks on his career. I watched him on loan at Wigan. I have to yeah. say, at that time, I was sold. I thought, you know, this guy's got everything <laughs> powerful, up and down. He can deliver, decent defensively. Yeah. And then he came into the Premier League, started getting a run of games for Chelsea. He was looking impressive. People were like, oh, this boy's delivery, man. He's, you know sort of that in-between between a Wan-Bissaka in terms of the defence and a Trent in terms of his delivery kind of yeah. thing. So people put him in the middle. And I've watched him and I've started to see more and more defensive deficiencies and his impact in terms of assists from that season have gone down as well. So I'm kind of in the neighbourhood of there being question marks. I don't know how good he's going to be long-term. Is he going to be at Chelsea? Is he the solution to their, you know right wing back spot and I even read today that I think Tuchel's thinking about putting him in on the right side of a free so there might be a home for him there because he has got the physicality the build yeah. in, to do that job so yeah right now question marks over Reese James question marks yeah mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I do a question marks as well I like him a lot and he's a uh... He's well-rounded. Yeah, you know I mean, he's probably the one of the most well-rounded fullbacks in the league right now. Um, the the question mark is, what is the best version of him type thing? And as you said, what position will be playing long term? Because um, I've heard Chelsea fans say they want to see him in the back um, in a free, and that obviously changes his role. But um, yeah, I do question marks. I do think it's between James Milner and World Plus potential. But I wouldn't say world class potential yet. Yeah. yeah, I've got to agree, man. Huge question mark. He obviously burst on a scene, and everyone was comparing him to Trent in terms of his output. And funny enough, we actually um, we interviewed uh, Paul Canterville, uh, the first black player to play for for Chelsea. We had lunch with him, and he was speaking yeah. very highly of um, of of Reece James and. Um, and, you know, just, you know, like we've already mentioned in terms of how well-rounded he is, the, the physicality, you know, the fact that he, he's got that, um, the, the, the ability to strike the ball, to make those crosses, to make those passes. So he's, he, he's a well-rounded player. He's got, he's got everything that he needs. Um, the question mark is, you know, will, will he feature long-term 
in the plans of 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 Thomas Tuchel. And I guess the position that he plays, whether it be at full back and or wing back or in a in a, in a, the uh, a back three, vastly will determine how well he develops and 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 the kind of career that he has. Um, I think he could play in a, in a back three that we've seen as Pilicueta play in that role. But I think that obviously limits him greatly because he's a great crosser of the ball. He's quick. Um, he's quite physical. And so you want to see him, you know, in that kind of Trent role. Um, but I think if he, if he is in, in that back three, then, then he's, he, he's, we're not going to see the best of Reese James. So it's got to be a question mark. You know, we don't know what, what role he plays um, going forward. No, I think people overrated that. him due to his physicality. Like they saw this specimen of a man gets up and down, very strong, built like a brick, like what Paul Canneville said. Mm. But I'm starting to lean towards the overrated side because I like him as a player. But as Dead said, I haven't seen enough and I'm seeing a lot of defects defensively when it comes to him 1v1. Mm. <sighs> I think he's got the potential to be a good player. But I think we have to put a question mark on his head right now because I'm yet to see Reese James play as good as Tariq Lamptey consistently. Yeah. Although Lamptey is playing for a lesser club, like a Brighton, so it's, it's difficult to gauge. From what I've seen yeah. of Reese James, he doesn't look better than Lamptey, in my opinion. So right now, I'm going to put a question mark on his head. Crazy. No, that's, that's interesting thoughts, man. I mean, I think for me... I think the question mark thing, if someone was to say that to me, I can't disagree with that. I hear that you're not sure what his trajectory is or what his his ceiling could be. But I, I do think he does have world-class potential. I think he has yeah, that potential yeah, yeah. to be world-class. I think mm -hmm. it's there. I mean, the characteristics are there. It's just about now showing the level of performance that is needed to be world-class on a consistent basis. So we'll see, man. It's, it's things that are yet to be seen. Um, let's keep the right-back theme running then and go to Trent Alexander-Arnold. Generational. There's no debate. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's no I debate. There's, there's Resume, literally no debate. Contribution. Yeah. Cool. He's in big there's, games, deciding that Champions yeah, League. Time. Yeah, yeah. There's no debate. What if I was to then say then, yeah. his defensive deficiencies are clear as they are. That's fine. You're allowed to say that. You can have your view, but that doesn't stop him from being a generational yeah. talent. And I think the easiest yeah, no. way to sum it up right now is that you look at this list and he's the only player on this list that we can all say is world-class. So he's in the generational talent. Simple. Fair enough. Fair enough. And also his contribution. I know obviously now people can say defensively, look what Sterling was doing to him. It was... You know, had him on strings, <laughs> but again, as a youngster, you burst onto the scene. You're gonna have that messy middle as a player. Yeah. Your trajectory, as a uh, Dan said earlier on, it's not linear. Your progression is not linear. He's still gonna develop. He's not the full package, but what he's achieved in the game, you know, the assist record, the monster, yeah. the key <laughs> games. <laughs> this this is the shortest debate we need to have. So. Generation it's like, hear that. Yeah, it's like it's a cheat. Like when Trent is playing at his best, it's actually like when I'm watching Liverpool, I'm like, this is actually a cheat. Like this ain't <laughs> fair. He literally <laughs> just gets the ball and bang, it's just a goal. Like, and you're thinking, how have you done this? And I think, come on, this is a player that's been in the world team of the year back to back. He's the best right back in the world. Yes, he's having a rough period right now, but he's gonna be back. This is a generational yeah. talent, easily. Yeah. And I think also, people watching in might like, be screaming in and thinking, "Oh, how can you say he's not a generational defender?" But I think he's a generational player um, because a lot of his that is, that is, a fair is point. a better people say, "Oh, Wan is a better defender than him." You know, you got your traditionalist, no right back. I want my right back to defend. Maybe yeah. Trent hasn't mastered that. That's a bit he can develop on. But in terms of being a generational talent, you know, we're talking about the skill set of a player. Trent is that man. You know, what's not, mad, not only, on. yeah, sorry, sorry not only, no, um, I was just gonna say, <laughs> sorry, I was saying, not only the skill set, I think the actual ability to not to basically change the reputation of a position. Do you know what I mean? Because the way he controls the game from that position, I don't think we've seen that like in, mm. in football before. Do you know what I'm saying? So, I think the fact that he is able to control games, he is like one of their main. You guys, I guess, main outlets for creativity. Um, yeah, we just don't see that at that position. 
And I think that actually encapsulates the word generational in uh, what he's done for the position. Just to add to that, Darren, I, w- I wouldn't say we've never seen it before. I, s- I would say that it's very rare, very, very rare to see it. To see Who do you it. think? It's a generational. That's Danny what Alves. Yeah, it's generational. Danny Alves, Danny Alves. Danny Alves and Marcelo. Danny no, Alves no. and Marcelo have controlled games. Games from that yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. I, I, I agree, but I also disagree with you because I made this point maybe like a year ago, Borg, and I understand that obviously Danny Alves and Marcelo, they were marauding fullbacks. They get up and down, but Trent does it in a different way. He's not... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the and most he doesn't the Premier League. Player. He's explosive, not the most yeah, he's not explosive, physical, yeah. but he's listen. I'm mm. just gonna ping this on my left foot into Salah, and it's gonna be one v one. I haven't mm. seen any other player do that. I hear but you know that, what? I'm that. just gonna cross it from the halfway line, and you're gonna be having a header in the six yard box. But it's yeah, I hear that. I hear <laughs> that. Maybe I should have been specific in that. saying we haven't seen a player do it in the Premier League. I think that's the differentiation, and in the way that he's done it. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. he basically bangs like. Center mid from right back, like it's yeah, very weird. Yeah, it's very weird. I've seen him pass, and I'm like, that's just dumb. That's really yeah. just dumb. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. Alright, cool. Getting to um the final guys um to kick things off. I'll go with Marcus Rashford, and I'll say question mark in a different way. So it's not a bad question mark. It's a question mark in that I don't know. He 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 has the ability to hit that. You know that twenty goal a season striker. But can he get there? Can he be that? Because obviously this season is, there's been a lot of highs and there's been a lot of lows. And obviously that comes down to management, coaching, where they're playing him, what position he's playing. But I just don't know if he has what it takes to hit that. When we remember and look back at Rashford's career, are we going to remember him as that guy who could bang in 20 goals a season? Or are we just going to remember him as another one of those talents who just... A journeyman, he, he couldn't really realize the potential that he <laughs> journeyman, had. You know, you know. <laughs> journeyman, you know. Journeyman, <laughs> journeyman. 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 Yeah. What I'd say about Rashford is, you say he's going to be that 20-goal season guy. Last year, he got like 23 goals. This year, he's got 15 already. And he's got double-digit assists. Like, and he's not a striker. You know I mean, I think that's been established uh, within the club that he's not a number nine. He is a, he's a wide man. You know, I think he needs to add more to his game. Like he needs to round out his game, similar to what we were saying about Greenwood. But um, Rashford's got world-class potential, fam. Like, I think Rashford's got over 250 appearances for the club, and he's only 23 years of age. Like That just shows that th- that experience will carry him a long way. Do you get what I'm saying? I think he mm. needs to definitely round out his game more, but the best version of Marcus Rashford is one of the best players on this whole list. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. How often? How often? Are we that's, the best? Hey, that's, that's the that's question. The big question. That's how that's often? Um, from what I've seen from Marcus Rashford, I like the player a lot. But I think off the ball, like when he's not scoring, when he's not assisting, yeah. what is he doing? And he has a lot of ineffective moments in games, which is why I wouldn't say he's generational. People love to make the comparison in Mbappe, Rashford. Like we know, Mbappe generational and for me Marcus Rashford is a few levels below Mbappe but um yeah I've got no other alternative than to say world class potential because you know his resume stacks up goals scoring at key times delivering in key moments producing in big games against big teams you know scoring Consistent. winning goals against Manchester City yeah so he he's definitely got world class potential and you know, we spoke to Rio Ferdinand and he's close to the club. And he said, you know what, this boy, he's got bags of ability. He can get to the very top. And he was even saying, yeah. almost like an Mbappe, he can deliver those sort of results. Although I'm not sure about that. We know I Rio's bias. You know, of course, <laughs> that's his Rio. bias. But, but world-class potential for sure. I think that's my last point on Rashford. It's just a consistency, man. Like, mm-hmm. if we can see a consistent Marcus Rashford, we've got something scary on our hands. Yeah. The player, man. But the point the point is to that is, and I totally agree with that, but it's the same questions of if we see a consistent Martial, mm. he could be a scary player. I mean, that's what everyone says. I mean, he doesn't have a Ballon d'Or clause in his contract for no reason. Mm. But um <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's the questions, man. <laughs> but the numbers, the numbers I say this season are maintaining it based on uh, adding to the, the, that's the thing with right. How how good is he really? 
that's the that's the question we need to ask ourselves because one day we watch Rashford and we're like, raw, he's packing him RB Leipzig, Leipzig, and then the next day we watch Rashford and we're like, where is he? Like, I'm not I'm not <laughs> seeing him. And I think if Rashford was twenty or twenty one, we would say easily world class, even arguably generational talent. But he's now twenty three. Yeah. And yes, he's an old 23 because he broke through at 17. So he's been in the game for a very, very long time. He's now an experienced player. He yeah. needs to be delivering week in, week out for his football club for yeah. me to say he's going to be world-class. And I think with Rashford, he's, he's, for me, after um, Bruno Fernandes, he's Man United's most dangerous player. But I just don't see it enough. And for me, there's going to have to be a question mark on Marcus Rashford. Okay, yeah. fair. that's fair. Mm. That's fair. I mean, I think Budge, you have the decider whether he's in the question mark category or the world class potential. Um, I'm going to lean on the side of world class potential. Yeah. I I appreciate that there are question marks around him, but I feel fairly confident that um he is going to be long term the the man that um, spearheads the attack for United. Um, and I think that United will continue to spend to get the right players around him, to get the, the best out of him. And I think certainly with someone like a Bruno Fernandes playing just behind him, I think he's got everything that he needs to really nail, n- nail down that position going forward for the long term and, and deliver what we know that he can. We've seen it in, in, in flashes and glimpses. It's just about the consistency with him. But I I, I don't doubt that he is going to be able to find that consistency so I'm, I'm going to put it I'm going to put him in the world class potential bracket cool 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 alright Christian Pulisic the guy who divides opinion often in the group chats <laughs> yeah it's, it's a, a tough, tough one he does he does uh, man flip man I really I really like him I really like him I think last season in my opinion he was Chelsea's best player with Mason yeah. Mount this season, he's been ravaged with multiple injuries and his final third play has left a lot to be desired at times. But I think he's just a brilliant, elegant elegant footballer. And I think mm. once he beefs up physically, he will handle the rigours of the Prem and become one of those best players in the Premier League. I think he's got all the potential. Um, where would I rank him? I can say question mark, but I'm going to throw him in the world class potentially bracket yeah. because I just think for me he's Chelsea's best player. And no, do you know what? I, I, let me just add to that and keep it quick. Um, I just think when I look at the list as well, and I'm seeing Martinelli there and Saka, yeah, exactly. I think Pulisic has to be that. And on top of that, I do agree with people who say the injuries we're not sure if he'll be able to sustain it and the injuries have been like have affected him a lot he hasn't put up the same numbers he did last year and he hasn't shown that same consistency he had last year however I think again a bit like the Hudson Odoi situation he's been a victim of like inconsistencies not being picked all the time then the injuries come into it so I, but last year especially during that lockdown period he showed what he's capable of and i just don't want him to become a player who becomes aesthetically pleasing but has no end product mm, that's it you know what i'm that's saying it. and that's the key thing for me but i do still think i'll edge towards world class potential but i won't disagree with anyone who puts him in the question mark category yeah, I'd go world class potential, man. I agree with Doc in that. Going into this season, I said, regardless of all the guys you signed, I thought Pulisic was still going to be your best player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I think he's been halted because of the injuries, um, not p- being played in his best position consistently. Like, he barely played out on the left all season. Do you know what I mean? I, and I think it's pretty clear that's his best position. Um, I like him a lot, man. Special, special. What he does on the ball is special. Similar to the guys that we said, uh, throughout this list that we want to see more from them off the ball but um, when the ball's at his feet special special play problems yeah mm, even uh, before yeah. last season I was I had the jury out I was thinking mm, what is this guy is it all bark no bite mm. uh, is he going <laughs> to deliver is he going to produce assists key moments goals and he showed it man he showed me he shut my mouth last season all the question marks I had had been answered and I think yeah world class potential like he's got major stocks on him in America, they think yeah. he's going to be the greatest ever player they've produced, kind of thing. Yep. And he's got a lot yeah. to live up to. And I think mm. that there's always key winners when a new manager comes in. 
And him and Hudson Odoi, I think, are two major beneficiaries because if there's anything Thomas Tuchel does, he develops players. We saw what he's done with Usman Dembele. And these yeah. are the sorts of players that he can get the best out of. So I think Pulisic has definitely got world-class potential. Mm. Definitely. I think even he's had a world-class moment in the Premier League because obviously he helped Liverpool win the Premier League last season against <laughs> Manchester City. So. <laughs> yeah. no, he had to chuck that one in, didn't he? He had to. He had to. Uh, Budge, we'll come to you with Mason Mount. What do you think of Mason Mount? <sighs> See, Mason Mount is a another player that I have a really soft spot for, man, because, uh, again, it's it, you know, uh, there's a lot of similar themes that have come up with a lot of these players that we've spoken about this evening. Um, yeah. And with Mason Mount, it's it's not just his ability on the pitch, which I think is clear to see in terms of what he, what he provides, what he offers, um, the impetus that he adds to that Chelsea team, key, that, that, that midfield metronome, you know, keeping things ticking over. Mm. Um, it's also the temperament of him and off the pit, off the pitch, the fact that he's so, um, grounded, so focused on improving his game, very, um, uh, uh, um, very much a, a player that like analyzes his, his game. He, he's he's not on a high horse. He's not on cloud nine. He's he's very aware of the areas that he needs to improve, and, and is very focused on doing that. Um, and I've I've you know made calls and said like. If he it remains consistent and, and continues in the current trajectory, we're, we've got a, a, a guy that could be potentially a, an all-time great. In, it, and that's how highly I, I, I rate him. Uh, honestly, I think he's a, he's a proper, proper player. Um, and similar to the other guys that we have in that category, when I look at his, his skill set and, and, and his makeup and you know, the, the the kind of things that we've already mentioned in terms of off the field, yeah. I, I I would put him in that world-class potential category, yeah. to be to be quite honest with you. And I know a lot of people might disagree and, and, and think that he, he might be a bit overrated and uh, and the love child of, uh, of, of uh, Frank <laughs> Lampard. But I, I just think that he, he is, he, he might be a player that goes under the radar a little bit, um, I don't think he he going forward. I don't I don't think he's going to be a guy that is going to contribute a significant amount of goals and assists. I think he has got it in his locker, but I think he's going to be more the the player. I, I, dare I say it in the mold of like a, a Luka Modric, who isn't going to score a huge heap of goals, but is so integral to the way that a team plays. Um, because of the, the the contribution that he makes in in, in ticking things over and uh, and being that kind of gel and that glue in the midfield, um, and that's why I've got um, uh, Mason Mount in that category. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm, this one's a tricky one to be honest because is he going to be that man that's going to deliver you numbers in terms of goals and assists? Are we talking about a water carrier? I think he's got any skill set. <laughs> to the mm. goals and assists. And mm. I remember speaking to Bradley Johnson. We spoke long and hard about Mason Mount. Obviously, they played together at Derby. And he was like, bro, this guy, like he wants to learn. Sometimes you get youngsters that come into the environment. They've got ego. They're like, yeah, I play for Chelsea, man. You guys are under me. <laughs> this guy was asking yeah. questions like integrating with the group, wanting to be one of the lads and staying after in training. And those are the hallmarks that Frank Lampard had, you know, maybe not gifted with the greatest skill set. I would even say Mason Mount's got a better basic skill set than what Frank Lampard had. So he's got a great base to which to work from. It's just the case that is he going to be afforded those opportunities to play regularly? Obviously, yeah. Thomas Tuchel has got his own identity now about how he wants to play. Obviously, people said it was a statement when he dropped Mason Mount for his first game. But I like the player. I think he's a good player, but I want to see more decisive moments because I believe he has it in him. That season yeah. in Derby, I know it's a different level. He was decisive. He was scoring at key moments, delivering. Yeah. So that's the step he needs to make. So I would say, I don't know, the jury's still out over what level he can be, but I think he'll be in between the James Milner and the world-class potential. Yeah. Yeah, um, I stand similar to where Dej stands in that. For me, I like him a lot, man. I think he's over-criticised, like, because obviously, as you said, he's Frank Lampard's baby boy. But if you're looking at him as a baller, 
Bro, the guy's not got a lot of holes in this game. He's like a tweener. He's not a number 10, but he's not really like a center mid. He's like a weird type of breeder player, but that that guy is valuable. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can basically play him in a number of positions, and he's not going to do a lot wrong. Do you know what I mean? And he'll do a lot right, man. Um, as I said, he's got he's got not a lot of flaws to his game, but I just have questions about what is his ceiling. That's why I go question mark, because I don't know if he's world class, but I do like him a lot, man. Like, I think he's he's a serious, serious player, man. And I like guys that don't have a lot of flaws. Do you know what I mean? He's clearly a, a well-versed um, guy in terms of he's going to give you Bs and Cs in nearly every single category. Mm. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think Chelsea fans are just very harsh on him for some reason. I don't know whether it's the connection with Lampard. But for me, I'm creating my own category. It's underrated. This player is underrated. You hear Chelsea fans saying, oh, get Mason Mount out of the team, blah, 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 do this, do that. Mason Mount shouldn't be playing. He's playing because he deserves to play. Yeah. From what I hear around the club, he's the hardest worker. He trains the hardest. He wants to be the best version of himself. And you need more players like that in football. And I point to someone like Jordan Henderson. Oh, he hasn't got the biggest skill set. He's not got world-class ability. But Jordan Henderson has maximised his ability. And that's why he's respected throughout the game of football. And I think Mason Mount, there's too much disrespect on his name. And I remember going on a previous podcast and I was like, listen, from what I have seen from both of the players, Mason Mount looks like a better and a bigger talent than Kai Havertz. A lot of people are like, oh, you're chatting rubbish, you're chatting rubbish. When I watch Kai Havertz, I do not see the hype. You get what I'm trying to say? I don't see it. I don't know. Obviously, he had a big reputation in Germany. But when I watch him, I don't see it. And when I look at the two players, Mason Mount looks like a better player than him. So why shouldn't Mason Mount be starting for Chelsea? He was arguably your best player last season. Came up clutch when he needed to come up clutch. So I don't understand why Chelsea fans are so quick to point the finger at Mason Mount. Like he's the problem at Chelsea when he's not. So I'm putting him in my own category. Underrated and underappreciated. No, Listen, if anyone's going to be underrated on this list, it's him. I'll give you that. Mm. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I think what it is, is even just to shed some light to the Mason Mount thing, seeing, talking to guys around the club and what it, like, it's literally, you know, when someone is the... The, the face, like Jorginho. Yeah. The yeah, whipping exactly. boy for criticism. The whipping boy, yeah. exactly. Sorry came in and said Jorginho. Well, not even said, yeah. but made Jorginho the system... And he was the problem anytime we lost. Mm. Lampard made Mount the system. He's the problem anytime we lost. So it's it's literally just he, he's just a victim of the fact that he is so good and the fact that people trust him and trust him to do big things. So no man, I totally hear that. I think based on the balance of what people have said, I think he goes in the James Milner category. Oh, if we're weighing yeah. it out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I would say in between. Yeah, yeah that's what. I yeah, yeah. yeah. I can top of that. that category, the top of that category. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. We'll leave it at that. And then finally, I bring think this one's going to be short and sweet. <laughs> no debate. Again, no debate. You know what? Right you know what? I think we have to be careful with this one. Okay. Boy. I Let's think go. we really need to be careful with this one. Dej, Budge, we spoke to Michael Richards. Mm. We hyped up Deli Ali to fail. Let's let Foden play. He hasn't yeah. had a full season in the Manchester City first team where he's a regular starter taking them to Premier League and taking them to Champions League. Okay. He's only made three appearances for England. Let's let him develop. We should not be yeah. calling Foden generational yet. He's got the talent to be a generational player. But for yeah. me, he's world-class potentially. Because when I look at him, is Phil Foden going to be better than David Silva? Arguably, maybe. And we never yes. called David Silva a generational player. And he's one of the greatest attacking midfielders to ever play in the Premier League. Yeah. So but for I think me, the ability he's shown at such a young age, what he's given. Yeah, and and for, for me, for me, what capped it up was his performance at Anfield. That's when I just threw my book down and said, Yeah, this guy is a generational talent. You don't go and do that at the home of the champions in that sort of game where it was twisting man up, scoring yeah. a goal, ripping up the rule book and saying, Listen, I'm a bad boy, I've arrived. Do you two things I'll say to you is that, in my opinion, I think what why I put Phil Foden in that category is because I think 
He's the star boy of all star boys. So when we talk about star boys with all these guys on the <laughs> list, he is the epitome of that star boy. And then two, all star boys have the coming of age party. That, that performance that we say, yeah, this guy is here. And if you look at all the guys on the list, I think Foden, like that that Liverpool performance, like let's not get it twisted. I know Joe, Alisson, Joe. I know Alisson made a couple mistakes, yeah, and you didn't have your full strength team, but you don't go and do that at your age and yeah. say, I'm going to be the main man in this game against the second. Mm. The two best... And that was the first time he had post nine, by the way. I believe that was the first time he even played the position. But to be fair, Pep Guardiola came out and he was like, listen, in the first half, Foden, he didn't play well. And he didn't. He stepped it up in the second half. And mm. this is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, terrific performance, world-class performance. But are we going to say your generational already when it took us two years of Mbappe banging in 30 goals a season before we gave him the card no, and the credit to the generational ticket. So I, I think... look at more the skill set, what I'm seeing from Phil Foden, key games, becoming an integral part of this Man City team. I know last season Pep was coming out saying, this boy, he's worth £500 million. Pounds. People are like, <laughs> come on, play him then. Like, he's got <laughs> the ability. And what we've seen so far this season, last season... He's becoming a key cog in that Manchester City team. He's yeah. now a first team. He's consolidated himself from youngster to first team regular. Yeah. And but I think then, to do that in a team, you know, crowning champions, like that's a big hallmark. And you have to say, then, if if Diaz is a generational talent, Phil Foden all day long is a generational talent. Yeah, but that's why I, I agreed with you with the Diaz one. That That's a bit far-fetched. We can't just call him generational after 20 Premier League games when we didn't yeah. really watch him in Portugal. But I think if Phil Foden is still performing to this level this time next year, then that's it. There's no question marks. There's there's nothing to say about his position as a generational talent. So if you guys are going to say it now, fair enough. I'll, I'll hold my hands mm. up and say, you know what? Put him there. Yeah. Because mm, what we're I, I think about he's... as well is style. We love what we see on the eye. It's very beautiful. It's pleasing. And we've got the substance. He's and the top goal scorer at Man City, bro. That's what I was yeah. just about to say. The substance is and there. And marries together. So, generational talent, man. And that, that is the key point right there. The, the blend of style and substance, that's a rarity. That is a rarity. Um, I, I, But I hear what Dot's saying, though, in terms of... We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Valid yeah. point. Up, very, very valid point. Yeah, exactly. We hyped up Deli Ali to fail. We hyped up Jack Wilshere to fail. And Jack Wilshere was doing it mm. on a high, high, high level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they, they actually have similar they're similar players in terms of their gliders, the passing range, stuff like that. And they were key cogs um, from a young age, but I can't I disagree in terms of him being generational, man. Like The more they put on his plate, the, the more he's going to pull up. No, 100%. But fam, that brings an end to a great episode <laughs> where we basically dive into a lot of the deep young talent in the Premier League. Proper. Deep, deep dive. Like, you need to go back in this episode and basically give your own opinions. Leave everything in the comments. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Do all of that good stuff for us. But beautiful game, man. Then we can't even appreciate enough how much. Like, love. Bro, love, school love. Love, 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 love. Thank you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. It's big. You've created your own platform. You're doing something you love. That's what it's about, man. And I feel yeah, the man. energy, man. So you guys keep doing your thing. Love. If you need anything from us, like reach out. We're here, man. Hundred percent. Appreciate. Same it, as you, bro. we're just grinding to do our yeah. thing. So, man, let's support each other. No, hundred percent, man. Yeah, I love the link, that. For the sure. link up was needed, and fam, I mean, people, are, people, people will enjoy this content. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, like I said, I mean, it, it, it could have been very easy for us to just dive into you lot's history and dive into the, the making of the beautiful game, but we wanted to talk football. That's where it all started. Just us two exactly. In our exactly. living room. So, boy, that's what we're gonna talk about. But once again, I appreciate you lot for coming on, Darren. Yeah. It's all love. We all kept our eyes on the ball today. Till next time. It's been your boy Daniel, it's been your boy Darren, it's been the Beautiful Game Podcast. We out, man. No. We out. Dude. Peace.